Good morning. How are you guys doing? I am uh, sitting here waiting to start. Pretty excited though. I'm listening to some music. I wish I could play music during the stream, but copyright issues. Um, so we're gonna make the ginger jeans finally. And uh, my little test pair of shorts turned out really great. I only needed to bring in the waist and I think I modified the pattern for this pair. So um, maybe I won't have to do that. I'll just have to try them on for the hems and things like that since I didn't make a, a pant length version. So I'm going to be using a stretch denim, kind of like my little short pair of shorts uh, trial was. And I'm going to be using this uh, print that I just used the, for the tunic number one as my pocket linings and stays. And uh, it turns out that I did sew that pocket correctly on the short. There's a w w version A and a version B and you can sew them differently. And so I just had not taken it in consideration with the zipper fly when I put it in. So I read through the instructions to see how they like to do it. And that's how I'm going to do it here. The only probably big difference I'm going to be doing while I sew these is I'm going to be trying to not switch between thread colors as often as you need to. So I'll probably do sew a bunch and then let the top stitching pile up, do a bunch of that and then keep going. Um, they do recommend if you have two machines to have them each set up with your thread colors. And um, that's uh, definitely a possibility um, that you could try if you have that luxury to do. So uh, there's um, something called a twin needle. I keep using this as my twin needle um, demonstration, but just so you guys know, this one's meant for stretch and I do know that. Um, they have them for denim and it's a twin needle. Um, I don't think I've really shown you what it looks like, but they're meant for home machines and um, they will do a really beautiful job of doing two rows of parallel stitches. There's two needles on there. You see that? I can't use this on my industrial because uh, the hole in the throat plate is an actual tiny little hole for one needle. So I would break the needles. So, But if you have one of those, I totally recommend using them for top stitching. They're super fun you um, just use a single bobbin thread and then it does kind of a um, zigzaggy looking under look to it. And um, it's uh, not, you know, it doesn't compromise the stitching at all. It's, it just makes perfect two rows of stitches. Uh, you can't use it when you're gonna turn a sharp corner, but you can use it on curves, so. All right, so I did print out some instructions. If you guys want me to refer to any of them, um, I'm happy to. I've read them through because I like to see how this pattern drafter designed her pattern because there's multiple ways to do things. And um, I definitely would want to respect the fact that not every pattern is created the same exact way and the sewing instructions will reflect that. All right, so my first step I actually laid out my little pocket here so I wouldn't confuse myself because what I'm going to do, they recommend um, putting the print a different direction, but this is the this is going to show on the inside of my pants and I think it's so cute that I'm going to do it where it shows. Okay, so this is my little coin pocket. It goes right here. Do you guys use those? I, I don't typically use my coin pocket. If anything, what happens is... Uh, I forget I have a coin pocket, put something in there and then I can't find it because I'm looking in my regular pocket. I've overlocked almost all of my um, pieces so I don't have to bounce back and forth between the machines. And um, I don't actually recommend that you do it that way because it will be a nice flatter look if you can surge some things together rather than separate like this, especially when you're doing something a little thicker like denim. I'm going to... I think I'm going to roll him this and I'm not going to use contrast stitching for my coin pocket. Is anyone else uh, sewing along on something? These I think um, once you have everything prepped they go pretty quickly. So here's my little pocket. That's my bobbin thread showing there. It's a little dark sorry about that if you want me to turn up the brightness I can. I turned off the auto exposure because it does something kind of crazy. It's a beautiful day here. I'm loving all this fall weather. 
I'm going to do two rows there just like this. The only reason I'm not doing a contrast is because I, I do, I, I'm going to use a yellow, which is pretty vibrant. And, um, I, you know, moderation. Um, I don't want to, like, pigeonhole my pants into looking good with certain things. And, it, it, you know, I know that it's an accepted color for denim and, and jeans, and we're used to seeing the yellow top stitch. Um, I still would just like to leave them as more trouser looking as possible. So, all right, so the next step. I'm always getting rid of my threads as I go. It just keeps it nice and tidy so I don't have threads showing later on. My next step is to attach. This is the pocket facing. It's what's going to show um, on the outside of my pocket. And see, here's my pocket opening right here. So it would be like this. That's how it works. This gets sewn to the pant. And there's only a right side for this, meaning not a left, just a right. So you don't have to do this step one time. I'm just going to top stitch that down. The denim's a little stretchy, so I'm trying to make it behave and not get a little too wingy. Um, I'm wearing my Burnside bibs that I sewed with you guys. I'm loving them. And uh, these were also sewn with a stretch denim. And there were times when I was sewing those that I thought, oh, um, this is looking a little wiggly and kind of wobbly. That's all sorted itself out. I'm really pleased to tell you. Okay, so we have this one like this. And yes, yeah, see I have the right side going to the wrong side because when I'm wearing the pants, I don't mind if you can see a little hint of this sticking out of my pocket. And when I look at my pants from the inside, this is what I'm gonna see. And I, you know, no one's gonna see that but me, but hey, I, I'm, I'm down for that. I, I really like the way that looks. Why not go for the splashy inside? Sewing has changed so much since I started sewing. Um, and I, I mean, I know I started when I was in high school, and that was a long time ago. But um, I've considered myself really starting sewing and getting into it and having a really big passion for it when I was in my, um, probably my mid to mid 20s. And um, it was uh, kind of weirdly, I had left the garment industry. Um, which is a whole story in itself because it's a very wasteful inter industry. Um, it's very uh, patriarchal, uh, contrary to probably what you would think. You'd think it was kind of a matriarchal situation, and it's not. And I was just getting a little, like, mm, fatigued of it. And so I kind of shucked it all and <laughs> moved somewhere and needed a job. So um, I'd gotten a job at a hardware store just, you know, because I would take anything. And then this fabric store that I had applied at was like, wait a minute, you have all these skills, you know, please come and work for us. And um, it was working there that I really got turned on to the possibilities of sewing and all the things that you can do with it and um, where I really got excited about it. And I've, ironically, because I had kind of essentially left the industry and um, home sewing wasn't the industry though. So I'm going to attach this pocket stay right now, which looks a little bit bigger. I don't know why. Oh, I do know why. I actually went back and trimmed all my seam allowances on my pants a little bit because the seam allowance is 5 8 um, and you are supposed to trim them to 3 8 so I just trimmed them down and I did it kind of at the last second sewing my curve I'm going to clip the curve and I won't top stitch this until I switch to my yellow thread color but now I have my little pocket here ready to go like this. See, that's the inside of my pants. That's the inside of my pocket. Kind of want it to show. It's kind of cute, huh? Um, and I'm going to do a, a French seam down here. Right, so I didn't need to overlock that. It's just something I thought about doing later on. I'm trying to do as much prep as I can before I start sewing with you guys because I don't want you to have to 
listen to my serger all the time or have my back to you because I haven't really configured my office for this beyond what you see. It takes up a lot of space. And I still need to use my sewing room as um, production for chicken boots. So I'm just going to basically, and see, so yeah, you know, I could have even done one more thread change by having cream thread here. So is anyone else sewing today? Can you guys all hear me and everything and the, the lighting looks okay? It's so much fun with you guys on Thursday. Um, and making that tunic number one was just so awesome. Such a nice little sew. And we had fun troubleshooting the neckline. I really could have nerded out on that a little further. I'm not going to lie. But it was kind of interesting. Like I feel like I knew that information. Um, but seeing it that way play out that way is, is just kind of drives it home even better. So that will be my pocket. Just like that. So I'm, I have to say like putting all this bulk into the zipper fly, it just, it makes me a little like, huh, interesting, you know, kind of, I'm surprised that that is, uh, you know, ideal. So I'm going to trim those seams there with my serger once this is all sewn. But you already have a right front just by putting on your pocket. So quick. Ooh, you're, oh, you're making a linden sweatshirt. I just bought that pattern, huh, Rebecca? You know, I was looking for some fleece just a couple days ago. After making that um, South Bank sweater, I um, I realized that I would like to make more cozy, cozy uh, clothes, you know? And um, that South Bank sweater was in such, it's just this amazing, yummy bamboo merino. Um, it's a pretty special fashion fabric. All right, we got that trimmed. And we're going to, oh, I got, I'm getting myself confused there. I'm trying to make, remember like, okay, yeah, like, <laughs> Because I have this wrong size to go. Let me, I have to do a visual here. Performance sewing is not the same as sewing by yourself. Oh, great, Elaine. Thank you for telling me that. You know, I'm a sewer. I'm a pattern drafter. I'm not a video tech editor. <laughs> so you got to forgive me. Okay, so there's my visual. Because remember, I, I am flipping the way the fabrics are suggested to sew. And um, I want to make sure that I do it properly. I'm going to do a um, French seam here as well. And I'm totally confusing myself right now. Shoop. Shoop. Just like that. Okay. <laughs> I find sometimes, Rebecca, when I am uh, go slow or I'm careful, I actually, that's when, it's almost like, um, like if you watch me thread the needle here, it's almost painful because I feel like when you're doing it for an audience, it's like, oh, you know, and, I, and it takes me longer. Um, but when I'm on my own, I just go, Zoop, you know, thread that needle. So I think it's it's kind of the same with the curves. Like I've just learned, like you just gotta just go for it. Um, you can always cut them deeper. You just gotta make sure you don't go through the the stitch. You know? Yeah. Let's make sure I got this right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing like doubting yourself, eh? Yeah, and like I said, you don't really need, you don't need to overlock a, a French seam at all. Like I said, I just wanted to make sure I got all my overlocking, gave myself some um, options. And then what I did uh, before I joined you guys was I kind of, in my head, plotted out the order of steps that I want to do because I'm trying to avoid changing thread colors a ton. 
kind of what I do in production sewing as well because um, I, I want it to be as uh, easy and fast as possible. Uh, we, we ridiculously dread doing thread changes here. Um, they take, you know, three whole seconds, so, you know, it must be a tiresome task, but it is kind of a mental thing, it interrupts your flow, and so we try not to do that. And in the last couple of years at Chicken Boots, we've had a lot more items with thread changes, and it does add to the overall production time, and so it's just kind of the way I think. All right, so normally right now, then you would go to your zipper fly. I'm gonna put my back pockets and my yoke on, and the reason I'm gonna do that now is because of the top stitching thing we're talking about right now. I did the interfacing stuff just like they recommend. I wouldn't normally uh, do that, um, but I do feel like because this has the stretch that maybe giving it a little more stability will help that. Um, I'm not gonna top stitch across my pocket. I kinda do wanna top stitch across my pockets. Yeah, I do, I do wanna top stitch across my pockets, but I'm gonna sew my yoke on then. And I took in my waist about two and a half inches in the back because I have a sway back. It's not because I'm like super thin. It's just because I have a sway back. Um, and um, I uh, know that I'm probably going to have to reposition my pockets because I took it out right here. And so what I did was the rise came about right here. And I blended it in with this curve. And so as a pattern drafter, um, you wouldn't normally do that without raising this right here but I had forgotten to do that when I cut it out. And I know that that's going to work okay with my um, pants because the shorts worked okay. I also narrowed my waistband because um, I liked it better and because of the stretch, it kind of flared a little. I also cut the waistband on the cross grain rather than the length grain, or I cut it on the um, length grain rather than the cross grain to minimize the stretch that it has. I don't find that the waistband needs as much stretch as you think. Um, I think like sometimes we feel like we need all that stretch in there because, hey, it's, it's you know, I'm scared it's going to be too small and um, we need that give and everything, but you really don't. Like you really kind of want your waistband to be as um, less, less flexible as possible because otherwise your pants get kind of tired over the course of the day when you're wearing them. And uh, you, you know, you'd much rather get relaxed in the hips than the waist. So as long as it fits at the waist, that's all you really need. You don't really need it to stretch. It's just going to stretch out. Um, and you know, then your shirt comes untucked, your underwear show, all those really lovely things that we battle with on the daily, right? So, okay, so here's my yoke. And I'm sewing 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance since they recommended 5 eighths and I trimmed. Actually, I didn't trim on that one, so I'm going to do like that. Uh, one note, um, and it's very possible that there is pattern errata uh, that I did not look up on this. Because um, I noticed when I sewed my shorts that this yoke piece was quite a bit longer, the seam was, uh, than my pant. And... Um, it looks really overexposed. Is that too overexposed? Um, and so uh, I checked it when I went to cut these out, and sure enough, the and I looked in the instructions. There's no talk about it. The um, the yoke is bigger. That seam. So I trimmed it to fit. So if yours doesn't fit, that could be why. There really could be pattern errata. Um, I don't think I missed anything else though. I didn't look it up. I'm really trying not to stretch my denim as I sew it. It's kind of funny when we're sewing knits, you know, you need to use a stretch stitch. And um, when you're sewing uh, stretch wovens, it's not as crucial. So I'm gonna go back and serge this since I missed that. I forgot that that's not my waist seam right there. <laughs> that's why I didn't serge. I was thinking, oh, it's my waist seam. So I'll be right back, I'm gonna do that.
Okie dokie. So now uh, these are ready for top stitch. Um, my pocket's ready to attach. My pocket openings on the front are ready to top stitch. So I'm going to switch my threads right now and uh, top stitch all that. And let's see how this yellow looks. I think it's going to be kind of bold. I know it goes with the lining, but no one else is going to see that but me and you. Yeah, that took forever, didn't it? Okay. Let's cut our teeth on this uh, yoke seam here. I'm going to push the seam allowances up and um, I think I'm going to do two rows. Ooh, that's kind of fun. So when I um, am trying to get nice parallel lines, I look where I want to go, not where uh, the needle is. This is my tip with sewing things like that when you're aiming. Um, I use the mountain biking simile. When you're mountain biking, you never want to look at the pothole you're trying to avoid. You want to look at the nice smooth pavement that's not going to send you over your handlebars. <laughs> so <laughs> you are doing the same in sewing. I look where I want to go and what I'm targeting because uh, my hands are way more co cooperative than I give them credit for sometimes and they will kind of guide me. And so what I'm doing on my machine is I'm centering this yoke seam on my uh, left leg of my presser foot right there. and. That is my guide. I'm staring right here. I'm not looking at the needle. It doesn't matter if I look at that because by the time the needle goes in the fabric, it's too late anyway. You could do this triple needle. You could do it narrower, wider. Um, I'm just kind of doing what I consider to be about a quarter of an inch. You can tell my denim is stretching a little bit. But um, I did find that to calm down a little bit once that um, <laughs> once um, they kind of get broken and stuff. I used to mountain bike, Stuart. Don't get too excited. I was really into it, and um, when I had my daughter, it got really hard to be gone for you know six hours on a mountain bike ride because <laughs> you know. You have to either drive to the location, meet up with the friends, then go on the three hour bike ride, then ride home. I used to ride there and ride back. Um, this was a while ago. I loved it though. I loved mountain biking. So fun. Little scary, little dirty. Where's my back pockets? Here we go. All right, let's hem our pocket. I'm going to fold this over and um, I'm going to sew from the top side. I feel like your stitch is always better from the top side of your machine and the bobbin has the most tendency to look a little sloppier, wigglier, the tension could be off a little bit more. Um, and so when you can't have the opportunity and you want it to look really nice, I always top stitch or do things from the top side. And it is a little scary. I totally understand that. But um, you can feel underneath what's going on. You can draw with chalk. Like I have this amazing um, choco liner thing. Let me show you guys. I'm sure I've shown you before. Well, I have an old style one right here. And it's got a little um, wheel. So, oh, this one's just pouring out. Oh, that's why I don't use this one. This one's kind of broken right now. This thing's probably 17 years old, but there's a little wheel right here and it makes this perfect line. It's just pouring out of this one though. This one, like I said, it's like 15 years old <laughs> and they have better ones now and the, the chalk just comes off. It's great. The style they have now looks more like you, when you hold a pen. So it is a little um, different of a feeling than using this one. 
Okay, so I'm actually gonna try and sew kind of close to this edge because one of my pet peeves with my pockets is when this kind of pull, does this um, when I'm wearing them and then I have to iron that. I don't wanna iron my back pockets. I just want them to do what I told them to do. I'm double stitching them. Darn it, why wouldn't they wanna behave? I think the most important thing when you're doing these types of things too is to make sure that your stitches are lining up from side to side. And one way you can kind of uh, ensure that is to kind of fold it and target it like this. So it looks a little wiggly probably, but it's the stretch of the denim is uh, making it ripple a little bit. And um, like I said, that's going to calm down. That, in my experience so far, it's been calming down once I get to wear them. These kind of look like denim. What do you guys think? Okay, so you'll notice on these pockets, one side is straight and one side is curved. See that? You see that difference? It's cut a little funny right there, but yeah. <laughs> Hi, Nicole. <laughs> um, you are not late. You can just pop in whenever you want, do whatever you got. I know, people have lives. So um, the little curve of this pocket here goes on the outer hip area. So uh, that's the way you would remember it. Your yoke is always deeper in the center back. So this is the pocket that goes on this side right here. This one goes on the other one. And you can always just look at it and see what you like. And now I got all this chalk on here. Sorry, guys. Okay. So when I line up a pocket, here's my, I always know personally the way I mark my things is where the pin goes in. I know where the pin goes in was the, the mark hole on the pattern piece, right? And so what I do, I'm going to look at this also because these were the original markings. And then remember, I made my waist a little bit narrower there. And so I'm going to center it between those marks and then I'm going to raise it up a little bit like that. I'm going to pin it down and we're going to evaluate it. <laughs> we're going to see what we think. And I pin kind of in the middle of the pocket so that I don't have to move the pins when I'm sewing. We're going to get all, rid of all this. Keep it nice and clean. Just like that. I feel like my hem's a little bit uh, cockeyed. And then um, I'm going to, you no. Know, so normally if I were doing one row of stitches, I would put a triangle here and I would start with my pocket upside down like this, go on my top to my, to the top of my triangle over and then down around the pocket. But I'm gonna do two rows of stitches because we're just gonna keep this kind of traditional. And uh, one of my little things I'm gonna do, this is another pet peeve, is I'm gonna nip this a little bit because when I turn it under, this is my one of my other pet peeve with my pants is that the, when the denim unravels, I get these threads sticking out of my pocket like that, and there's nothing you know that looks less flattering than uh, your pockets on your butt having stuff coming out of them. So I try and trim that, and then I'm gonna encase it in my top stitching here. And probably my plan, this is what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to go around, across like two or three stitches on the top of the pocket, and then back down. And so I really want this curve to be nice and gentle here. It's kind of a classy touch that they added that um, to kind of mimic the, you know, your rump. I'm going to use my trusty awl. Move my thread out of the way there. It's feeling a little shallow, so I'm checking right now. Because of the stretch of the denim, it does kind of want to fight me a little bit. 
Uh, one of the weirdest things I experienced with this denim when I was sewing the inner, or I'm sorry, ironing the interfacing down to the fabric, it curled. I, I, I've never seen that before. Like, I, you know, knits, knits will curl when you cut it out and you don't get to sewing it right away. Those knits, man, they rebel. But I have never seen denim <laughs> do that before. And I was a little kind of like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I don't need to fight that. I'm trying to get this straight because this is not a gentle curve. And then this straight and get my corner there. I'm using my awl to make sure. I always stop with the needle down. My machine does that automatically. Totally recommend it if it's a setting on your home machine to enable it uh, because it acts like another hand holding my work where I want it to be. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to nip that corner again because it's my pet peeve, right? <laughs> I have some pet peeves in sewing. Because see, you can see this little piece of thread right here. It's already coming undone. So we're going to nip it like that. And I'm going to encase it. And I'm going to go across. So let me see, is that two enough? Yeah, two is perfect because of my stitch length. Ooh, it's a little wiggly right there. See that? I'm going to go back and fix that. And kind of gauging where you need to turn the corner here is a little bit trickier to make sure that you're getting that parallel thing parallel stitch definition and also I really want to turn the corner at the center of my V you know so I kind of go like this and look to see yep now I'm going to take my pins out So I haven't really sewn a lot with uh, stretch wovens um, and denim and stuff. And uh, the thing that I'm finding is that it really fights my stitching being straight, which is an interesting thing. See right here? That's, that's not okay with me right there. So I'm going to probably pick it up right here and continue it right here. And I'm going to try and start and stop exactly where my stitches were. I know it's kind of a bummer that I got to start and stop at all again right here because I had such a nice continuous thing going there. I always remove the stitching on the inside as well. Just get rid of all of it because those threads can kind of come back to haunt you sometimes, you know. Okay. So I'm going to get my stitches right where the others were. <laughs> it's okay. My machine's not doing a full back stitch, so it didn't look like it lined up very well. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. So that's my little correction. The nice curve there. Uh, the pattern instructions are really cool. They show a little more of a gentle swooping in right here to go right here. It's always good to reinforce this even if you don't do the double stitch um, because it does get a lot of um, you know stress on the pocket. I always put my phone back there. A lot of people do or my um, wallet or something like that. Car keys, my hands. I'm always you know nervous habit. Stick my hands in my back pockets. All right, let's see if this one goes a little better. I mean, they're homemade jeans, right? We're not production sewing here. They can look handmade, that's okay. Okay, here's my little, I actually did mark those with chalk, just because I had my chalk liner out there, that's where it's at. Okay, so I'm going to, Center it between the dots and then raise it up. And I'm going to compare this one with my other pocket because I don't want them to look 
asymmetrical, you know, one side of the other. That wouldn't be very sexy, would it? So the other thing I can do is this. Is put my jeans back to back like this. And I can kind of making sure I gotta pull up the pant because it's pulling. You know how I don't like that either. I don't like it pulling and fighting me right now. So I'm gonna poke in here right where my corner of my pocket is and get them perfectly symmetrical. Because right now the markings of the pattern are less important to me on that other pocket than getting it symmetrical to the other side. And then I'm going to flip it this way my two pins and find those same holes and now I can get rid of these two right here and this just like that and see I'm really glad I did that because uh, this one right here is a little low just like that Here we go. Is anyone sewing today? What are you guys working on? I know Rebecca, you're making a linden sweatshirt. You're using your serger for that? And you have a cover stitch too, I think, right? Okay, so I'm gonna do our other one now. Oh, I keep wanting to turn this upside down like I always do. I'm gonna leave those pins in there right now because that's where I want my corner to be. I'll secure them so they don't fall out. Set myself up for success. That's one of my mottos is ensure success. And it's so cheesy, I know. But you know, if you know that it's going to be better to do something and you'll probably get a guaranteed result, do it. <laughs> because nobody wants to have to rip stuff out, especially at midnight, um, the night before the costume is due, right? So set yourself up to succeed. No crying aloud unless you really absolutely need to right we don't want to feel that way okay so this is my straight edge of my pocket and i find um when i'm trying to do something straight or curved that um especially straight my machine sews really straight i'll bet most people's do as well you can test it out it's not like a car where it has the alignment and it can go off to the left or right and so sometimes i think inadvertently Things don't look square or parallel to parts on our machine and it's just an optical illusion and you can trust the machine so hands off and it will pull it straight and um, I have better results that way. And it's the same with the curve. You have pivot points in your curve that allow you to kind of just gently hold it there and then it will guide it through the machine a little better. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, yeah. Muslin, muslin is, um, the funny thing about muslin, if you're actually using muslin as your muslin, it's uh, that the term a muslin, I feel like is really common nowadays, but people aren't actually using muslin to make it. And um, they're using actual fabric and um, thinking, oh, I'm gonna make a wearable muslin. But that's a lot of pressure to put on your muslin, right? So, um, yeah, like if you, you gotta cut yourself some slack when you when you try go to try on that muslin because it's like the worst fabric, the least fl flattering fabric. It's got like nothing going for it except that it was a sewable piece of fabric to find out the fit and the silhouette of something, right? So um, it probably fit better than you thought, but because it was in the muslin, it didn't look like it. Okay, so this is the um, that's the point I know I want right there. So I'm going to secure this down because then it'll match my other point. And now I'm going to work on this curve. I'm going to pull a little bit of it out. Kind of encourage it back. It's not a very big curve because then you would get these little um, puckers in there. <laughs> oh, nice, Nicole. Mermaid scales and sparkly fold over elastic. Oh boy. <laughs> I 
I trimmed that, right? No, I didn't, I didn't. You guys gotta remind me of my pet peeves. I'll have one pocket in those threads. I feel like this pocket went a little better. What do you guys think? This is this is so so such good proof that you can sew one stitch at a time on an industrial machine. People always think that they're really really fast, and they can be. Trust me. But um, once you uh, get the hang of it, you can just do one stitch at a time too. I think my parallel line is a little wider than the other pocket. They look like jeans. Yeah, exactly, Nicole. <laughs> yeah, my daughter went through, through, through some really great phases. Um, I, you know, I went to fashion school. I, I'm not the most fashionable person. I know that. But at the same time, I still have my opinions and my likes and things like that. And when I had my daughter, I was actually pretty excited to get some clothes for her. Because funny enough, one of the big... Um, like parts of my career whereas in the children's wear industry like I was in the children's wear industry for a long time and so I was pretty excited I was like oh you know I'm gonna like buy some of the brands I like some of the European things we used to research I just love and uh, about right before she was two I want to say actually it was about she was about two and a half she stopped letting me dress her <laughs> Like two and a half people, like that wasn't very long. I got, you know, that I got to, to address her. I'm trying to clean my glasses with something. Um, and um, the the outfit that kicked it off was a princess dress from a Lego store in front of Disneyland, and the thing was so tacky. Um, and my my mom was there, and of course she was like gonna enable this, and and, and me too. I was like, this is kind of fun, you know. Like she's not a girly girl girl, and into the typical things like princesses and dolls and things like that. So it was kind of fun to see her sporting this whole thing. And she wore that thing for three solid months at least. <laughs> Gina, you haven't missed much. We haven't done the fly zipper yet. We've just done some pockets and things like that. I'm like going back and forth from the directions because I want to top stitch them. <laughs> so yeah, she wore, um, I need to adjust the straps, drive me nuts. Um, she wore this princess dress, like, and it had this, like, organdy, like, sleeves and stuff, like, see-through organdy sleeves from, like, the, like, three-quarter length down. And that stuff got so ratty that I've, I tried fixing it a few times and stuff like that, you know, like, kind of repairing it. I finally just cut it off. Like, it was the best thing I did was just cut it off. And uh, eventually it disappeared in the laundry, you know. Because it was so threadbare and there were like holes in the satin, you know, and stuff like that. I just made that look really hard, didn't I? Sorry. <laughs> All right, let me uh, edge stitch my pocket here. Okay, so the smart thing to do would be to iron this. So I'm going to iron this because I know sometimes you guys get a little stressed when I don't. And if you weren't here, I totally would, I promise. I, I am that sewer, I promise I, sew, I, I iron. I do, I do. Especially if my mom's watching. I iron, I promise. That's what my mom told me when I was learning. She said, now, my favorite tool is the iron. And I was a beginner and I was like, really? Mine's the steam rubber. <laughs> and so uh, she just kind of gave me that look like, mm, you know, that's probably not the best friend to have while you're sewing. Uh, it probably means you should be ironing as you go. Yeah, exactly. Purple princess dress. Yeah. yeah, and my husband bought my daughter this um, little dress. It was really cute, but it got so dirty on the belly only, you know, because those toddlers have those bellies that stick out. And the back of the dress looked brand new, and, I, and then the ruffle kept falling off of it, and I finally was like, I don't know, the laundry ate it, you know. Let me just iron this really quick here. Now there's no way my daughter would let me sew something for her probably, or, you know, she might be into it, but, um, 
it, you know, her tastes have changed. Okay, I just noticed an issue with this one right here. I didn't quite catch it in there. See that? Darn stretchy denim and me not paying attention. But good thing we're ironing it so we can do it now. We'll fix it. Gotta fix your errors right when you find them. They just get bigger and bigger later on. If not. And that's my other little tip is like, if you have a problem with one of your garments and you need to walk away, I totally understand. But if you can at least fix it, yeah, I'm gonna use the yellow thread right here. <laughs> um, if you can fix it before you walk away or at least rip it out to that point and then walk away, you will come back to it so much faster than if you hadn't done that. I'm going to reclip that because this didn't get clipped. <laughs> I am using a Juki 8700. It's brand new, actually. Uh, the one I was using was a 5500. Um, there's actually one of those um, right behind me. Let's see. Uh, over, wait. It's like, oh, it's right behind me now. See? There's a 5500 back there, it's set just for binding. And then this one's an 8700. My other 5500 finally uh, died. <laughs> and uh, I had to uh, make it caveman style without the electronics. So um, I love my, my Juki. Yes, Rebecca, the iron is just as important as the sewing machine. I don't know, see that's why I stopped and did it. I know how you guys feel about the iron. Plus, it's a great way to see how it's going to look, you know, when you iron it. And it's going to make it behave. There we go. All right, what do you guys think? Two rows or just one? I could do one here. I could do one edge. I think I'm not wearing jeans today to look and see what, what would be normal. <laughs> We're not going for normal, though, are we? Okay, I'm going to edge stitch one and we'll see what we think. always putting my garment up on the machine table so it's not pulling against my needle and I'm not fighting it. There's no need to back tack when you're doing top stitching and things like this. I'm going to leave it at one row, I think. Um, and uh, the reason you don't need to back tack is because the, the seam's already been back tacked, um, and even this kind of seam, you don't actually have to, um, because it's gonna get enclosed in a side seam and the waist. And the reason we don't do that a lot is because it's extra bulk, it's extra time, um, it's unnecessary, contrary to what it feels like. And um, sometimes, like if I were to do it on this step right here, oh, I got a little low there. If I were to back tack right here, um, there's a danger that some of it would show on the outside of the pant and you'd see this like heavy stitch right here in my coming out of my side seam. And I just don't, I just don't really like that. You guys want two? Okay, I'll do two, two. Yeah, I'll do two. I love top stitching by the way. I'm feeling a little pressure that I have an audience and um, it's contrast, so like every little thing is showing. You guys like that better? Two? The votes are in. <laughs> this is a really great pattern. Um, I am, I'm pleased by that. Like I see really popular patterns and it's really hard like this is gonna sound really critical, critical, you guys. I know, but like, you gotta remember, this is my background. My background is as, as a pattern drafter in the garment industry. This is what I did. I did it for 100 plus people freelance. I've done it for lots of different companies. I've done it for outerwear, children's, women's. Um, I've done a bunch of things. And there are a lot of things out there that we buy that we don't like the fit of that have some pattern no-nos in it. 
And there are a lot of home sew patterns that have a lot of pattern no-nos in it for me. And so it's hard, like I really want to get on the bandwagon and sew some of those things. And then I'm worried that I'm gonna find something I really don't like about the pattern. Okay, you really can't see my um, coin pocket very well, but that's okay. I'm not a big fan of coin pockets um, because I tend to get hung up on them. I'm, I'm a klutz, you guys know that, right? Okay, so there's my, my uh, pocket. Can you slay that? It's a little overexposed. Oh, I gotta fix that. You see that? My fabric's coming to the front. Yeah, I gotta fix that, you guys. Sorry. Gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna take out both rows. Do it again. I know I'm letting a lot slide, but something like that, I won't. It's not gonna take but a minute to take this out. I might as well, right? <laughs> We've got the time. I feel like I'm rushing sewing all the time now. Um, and um, I'm getting too many clothes. I'm not complaining, but um, I'm feeling like if I do the math and I sew even just one new garment a week with you guys, that's 52 garments a year. I don't need that many new garments. I'm hard on my clothes, but I'm not that hard. And um, I need to slow down a little bit. Can you see me taking that? Okay. Yeah, because I didn't really pull the fabric well enough when I got to that little curve there to uh, make sure that it got on the inside. Ooh, I love the yellow stitch against the cream fabric in there. It looks really good. It's going to go really good with my tunic number one since it's got the shirt out of the same fabric. I tried that on it. It's really cute. I love the little um, pocket. I'm really glad that... You, um, <laughs> my favorite tool. No, no, it's not my favorite tool. This is my favorite tool now. <laughs> Same company though. <laughs> but yeah, I know my favorite tool. Um, yeah, I'm really glad that I changed the pocket. I'm glad we hadn't sewed it on because um, when we ended up tipping the um, neckline with that bias trim, um, I thought that was turned out really nice and um, I, I like it with that other pocket. I got new glasses and the, the little bifocal line is in the wrong place. I told them that it would be. But it's like right where I want to look. It's very annoying. Okay, almost there. This uh, thread's a little heavier and um, I don't want to snag the denim. So that's the thing with um, a, a fabric like this. And anytime like you have a dark colored fabric, um, what I find is um, even if it's just a print cotton, a quilting cotton, you can have the danger of if you snag the fabric just a tiny bit, it pulls a thread and it makes the print of the, um, the pattern print out off kilter. <laughs> it's the best entertainment. I don't know about that, but thank you. Okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm kind of sliding it like this. It since I ironed it, it's kind of like, hey, no, you told me that you wanted me over there, and now you're telling me you want me to go somewhere else. Yeah, and I'm the boss, so you're moving, buddy. Put my pat my garment up on the machine. Get to this trouble spot here. I'm going to kind of pull the lining on the inside like this. Ensure success, right? That's better. Not too bad, huh? See, just take it out right away and move on like it never happened. We'll never talk about it again. Deal? Okay, so let's see. My next step, I think, is the zipper fly. And I think I might trim uh, this extra. Because remember, I trimmed my seam allowances with the serger after I had already surged all the things. And so uh, they're sticking out a little bit. Not quite ideal. Ugh, I'm just so skeptical about putting all this fabric into the fly, you guys. 
I don't like that. I know I'm being picky, but like, I don't want like there to be a ridge here. This is four layers of fabric that's going to be folded over there. And in my little like how to sew a zipper fly video, I didn't include the pocket. And so I didn't really realize that that was what was going on there. And um, plus my interface sticks, I'm following the directions. So I'm just smoothing this out. I'm going to kind of see where it wants to be now. Just like that. I'm going to um, pin it in the middle just so that I don't have to figure that out again, just like this. And I think I'm going to go and uh, surge that off, make it all one. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of debating on getting rid of this right here. I know it's against the instructions. <laughs> Do I have permission? <laughs> so the fly is uh, like right here. So this is all extra here. Um, I can see putting it uh, up to here to the fold point. That makes a little bit more sense to me. Um, eek, I know I shouldn't change it, but I want to. What do you guys think? Well, you know what? Let's just learn on my jeans, okay? <laughs> we'll just learn on my jeans. I will do it. I will. I'm going to cut them off, cut it off right there. Um, because what's going to happen is this is, this is how the fly gets sewn. It gets sewn like this first. This is like the very first step you do like that. And I feel like it can just sit in there, just one layer and then fold over it and encase it like that. That's kind of what I want to see done instead. So um, I'm going to trim that off, you guys. <laughs> yes, get rid of it. Yes, get it out. Okay, I like it. I like your enthusiasm. Okay, it's got a neat. I need to like put it in the right spot. Science. <laughs> I know this is a very unscientific way to do that. Okay, there we go. One's gone. Let's do the other one. Sometimes I will, um, like if I can't figure a sewing thing out or I'm like, mm, do I, how do I, how do I think I'm going to like that? I will, um, make a miniature of it, even if I just kind of roughly do the shape and then I'll, I'll use a stapler and sew it together with a stapler. I'll sew a paper with my machine. I'll do all kinds of things to figure it out before I get to this, you know, like this final step. And so, um. Um, that's kind of what we're doing. We're kind of like, okay, this is what's going to happen when I sew it, right? So let's get rid of it. We don't like it. One of you is going to read the instructions and be like, well, no, you needed that. I'm going to be like, I did? Shoot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that even just so I don't try and make it even later on. I do have a little rotary knife here. I should have used that probably. Okay, it's gone. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna pin this in a few places and I'm going to go surge this a little bit. I'm trying to make it really flat so that, you know, this is how it's gonna lay when I wear it. So I really want it to just behave. We're always trying to make things behave. Okay, so let me uh, surge this really quick. Trying to decide, do I want to do that right now? Yeah, I want to do that right now. I'll be right back. I'll be just a second.
So see, if you hadn't pre-surged everything, you guys, you could have done this and it would look a lot cleaner than going back and doing things, you know, like now. So you wouldn't have done the surging until this step, in other words, and then it would be a little cleaner. I'm gonna eventually reconfigure this all so that you can see both. I could just pivot my camera, but um, we'll see. We'll see. All right, um, you guys down for the zipper fly? I am. I'm going to uh, stitch this down up here so I can get rid of my pin. The stretch is, it's kind of fighting me a little bit there. Okay. There we go. All right. So I'm going to uh, pin this down here though, because I want to make sure I catch this when I go back to um, stitch it down. I think actually I may have made an error by cutting one side of that, but <laughs> we'll see. I will fix it. This, the mistakes are what make you a better sewer. Firmly believe that. Let's get rid of that pin inside there. That was dangerous. Okay. So right sides together. So when you sew your zipper fly, um, using their instructions, you are to serge this extension here. This is the fly extension, and then the other piece is the fly shield, and it goes behind it. Um, the fly extension is serged on one side, my serger isn't very agile at turning these corners here or stopping like that. My blade is a, it must be a little further in front. I, I know sergers are always kind of a little less agile doing those corners, but mine feels really unagile that way. So I do the whole thing. I already clipped to the, the marked point there, the pivot point, And then um, I serge both these edges as well. So if you follow their instructions, um, you do do this in a little bit of a different order. Okay, so you use a big basting stitch on your first thing here, and I'm going to sew to that point that was marked. So I need, since I already clipped it, I really need to make sure that I don't accidentally misalign that spot. Um, otherwise, there could be raw edge showing on the outside. We don't want that on our fly. The fly gets a lot of wear and tear. We're, you know, we're. Um, and so you really need it to be secure. Okay, and so I, here's my pivot point right there. That's, I'm calling it a pivot point. It's not an official term. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna switch back to my regular stitch length, back stitch, and continue on like that. I'm gonna get rid of these threads right now. My serger is a little messy. It's a great serger, I love it, but. And then um, I actually have my little cheat sheet that I made so I don't have to remember all of this in my head. I'm not superhuman, and I have other things in my head that I'd rather worry about. Okay, so I basted my center front, and now I'm gonna double needle top stitch. That's what DNTS, that's like industry. <laughs> um, double needle top stitch my left front. And when people say left front or right front or things like that, it means it as if you are wearing the garment. So this is my left front. And so now I'm going to do my double needle top stitch. And what's great is that this is going to secure this uh, pocket that we just hacked off. And you definitely would want this to be straight since it's front and center. I think anything with a, a fly is really noticeable. I'm going to push the seam allowance of the fly at that pivot point onto the left front so it gets top stitched down. Do you guys remember that trend that was happening for a, a little while with men's pants and they had like really flashy like stitching or something right here? I, it was such a pet. I couldn't handle it because, you know, for me, like anything, I just, my eye goes right there. I don't know, look at that, you know? So um, I'm glad that trend's done. <laughs> But it's the same with um, your fly. Like, I feel like if the, ooh, I'm getting a little narrow. This stitching doesn't look very good. 
Um, I feel like if anything is wrong with your fly, the eye goes right there. Like if your um, zipper is poking out right here, you know, and you see a shiny bit of metal or the zipper tape's the wrong color or something, it really shows. And um, we don't want that. We, we don't want people to say, oh, hey, did you make that? <laughs> I mean, you kind of want to because you want to say, yeah, I made this. On the other hand, you're like, why are you asking me? You know, we all know this one. I'm going to take this pin out because now we've secured the spacing under there. Voila, it is done. Okay, now we're going to sew the zip to the right front extension and we're going to top stitch. This is my right front. And you do it face down. And you line up your zipper, the um, tape to the bottom of the extension and to you butt it up to the seam that you sewed first, just like that. And uh, the reason you, you absolutely need this space right here, it's not gonna be a gap or anything. Stuart, <laughs> um, you um, want this gap because back, you know later on, we're gonna double needle top stitch this curve like you see on the outside of the fly and you want it to be able to pass by here without hitting your brass Teeth or whatever zipper you're using. If you're using a nylon coil, it's fine, but most likely you're going to use a denim zipper. Okay, and um, let's see, I'm going to sew it to this side. Oh, I need to put on my zipper foot. Sorry, I hardly ever use a zipper foot. Forget about that. I don't use a zipper foot sewing any chicken boots things because um, we don't need the next to clearance that the, this needs here. And my zipper foot is quite a bit different than a home sewing machine. You'll notice that it um, doesn't go left and right. My needle position cannot change on this machine. So it's just got a really narrow um, foot on either side of the needle and a slot. Okay, so lining up my extension, twill tape to seam and twill tape edge to the bottom there. It's face down. And I'm going to so I'm going to back stitch this. I did upload a video on all of the zipper fly steps if you just want this little part. It's just a bunch of like eight inch long uh, straight stitch segments. That's all a zipper fly is except for that last curved stitch. It's it. Really easy, you just gotta remember the order. I've sewn a bunch this week, so um, I, it's kinda in my head, but you know, if you ask me like three months from now, I'd have to have my cheat sheet for sure, and I may have to go do a run through. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip my pants this way. I just happen to know that um, I want to sew from the inside of the garment rather than the other side. I don't wanna sew from um, the other side. I wanna sew from this side, so you're going to Flop this over just flat, just like that. That's two rows of stitching right there. So that's what we just sewed. We're gonna put it over here, just like that. And this is what I mean. I wanna sew from the zipper side rather than this side. So that's why I flopped it over because I know I'm gonna start at the bottom. And now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna sew two rows of stitching, one really close to the zipper and then um, just one next to it, like over here. Just like that. Okay, next, let's see. We just did the extension, we did the double stitch. Now we're gonna top stitch the fly curve. We are already to that point. So uh, we're going to move this over here just like that. And the instructions do come with a um, template, I'm pretty sure, on how to do that. I'm gonna take off my, am I gonna take off my zipper foot? I'm gonna take off my zipper foot. You get better top stitching results if you have a better, a bigger, you know, surface area on your presser foot. So I'm gonna take off my zipper foot and put my regular one on. I only have three feet for this machine. I have a zipper foot, my regular one, which I use almost 100% of the time. And then I have one to, to sew um, vinyl and things like that. It's like a Teflon foot. Yes, it is magic, Gina. Anyone can do it. 
I feel like that, you know, it's like when you get, when you're sewing a lot of things and you start expanding your sewing library, you start coming against the exact same skill you're trying to avoid. And that's what it was for me with zipper flies. I just started wanting my own pants and wanting to fit it. And I wanted to troubleshoot fitting and things like that. And so I um, just decided one day to finally just sit down and do it. All right, so I'm going to use my under fly extension here as a guide. I'm going to feel it. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. I could probably, yes, yeah, stand to use a top stitch template. Just make sure I'm parallel to my nice wiggly top stitching there. <laughs> And this is why we really wanted that clearance of our uh, fly extension down here. We don't want to accidentally sew through our zipper and break a needle. I'm going to try and come at it at kind of a 90 degree angle back stitch. And I'm going to do it again. I think I should have done that one a little bit further that way. Stop it. Yeah, it's getting a little narrow. I may take this one out. Okay, I'm not going to back stitch because I'm going to take that out. Not okay. This is when you want to make sure you do not knit your um, fabric when you're taking this out. I'm actually using my awl, my favorite, my real favorite tool, um, mainly because of the uh, seam ripper is so sharp. I'm a, a little nervous that I'll nick my twill and then I'll pull it and then I'll have a um, misalignment with the fibers, you know. That other denim I was sewing was a little less forgiving taking out a stitch. <clears throat> you could actually see where my um, stitching had been. It kind of separated the fibers. So uh, this one's a lot more forgiving. I could feel the, uh, under, the fabric underneath pushing my, my presser foot. So it's really good I didn't use the zipper foot. It would have been a disaster. Most likely it would have been really wiggly and all over the place. This is the only zipper I had here. Like I was all set to do this last night. <laughs> like I got it all ready. And then I went, oh shoot, I don't have a zipper. So I had to steal this one from something else. It was either this one or another one. The other one had a flaw in it. Um, so I don't want to use it on my, in my gender jeans, you know? So I need to go get some zippers. Okay, get rid of my thread now because um, I don't want to permanently put my <laughs> ripped out thread in there. Okay, let's do that again. And I'm the boss this time, not the fabric underneath. Yeah, it's wanting to push, but we are pushing back. That's better. Okay. Top stitch fly curve. Uh, and now we're going to add our shield. This is the shield right here. So you, uh, I searched the edges already, but you can do that in one step after you do this step right here and then have them together. It's a 5 8 inch seam. And then you trim it a little bit down to 3 8 or so not huge um, important thing there okay um, I'm gonna top stitch my shield shut right here because this is where you would surge it just to make sure it lays nice and flat okay so now we going we're going to add the shield and it gets sewn to the right front extension just like that
Let me just back tack. We're, we're like almost done, you guys, with this fly. Okay. And so um, this did not get enclosed there like that. You see that? So there's my air. That's why we didn't want to trim that side. <laughs> Whoops. So I'm gonna surge that and then I probably will um, whip, like kind of maybe hand stitch that or something. It's just not quite long enough to attach to this. So there's why you learn <laughs> from my mistakes. Yeah, we sh you should have zippers. Um, well, for the these right here, they need to be seven to nine inches for a denim pant um, and for a button fly. Uh, they actually like I'm pretty sure you guys carry this brand of zipper and I think it actually says bean zipper on there So it's pretty straightforward when you look at their thing um, and, and you don't need a lot of colors like I would just go for the dark colors um, And maybe one light color, but if you don't have white denim, I wouldn't do it Just do this. Okay, so now the moment of truth we're going to take out our basting stitch and um, I'm gonna do that. I just got it going right there. I'm gonna do that from this side because I can see it a little better. And then that way um, I don't accidentally cut my zipper fly. My, this interfacing, I don't know where I got it. Um, it's pretty terrible. I don't usually use fusible interfacing. You guys have heard me talk about it. Um, but I did on this because um, I really want this to be as similar to the pattern as possible. So if you ever want to look at this video again and sew your own pair, you can kind of say, okay, that looks like what I'm doing. You don't need that many new and different things to deal with if you're trying to make your own. It's kind of hard to grab though because this uh, interfacing is kind of fuzzy. It's really hard to, to work with. I just need to get some more. Um, usually I just use a piece of um, the self, the, the actual fabric. I call actual the like main fabric of your garment. I call that self. That's just a thing. And um, I usually use that or I use a lighter weight like lining, like maybe quilting cotton or something like that. Just something a little bit lighter. So this is the basting, the very first basting stitch that we put in. This is it. like that and now I'm gonna pull it from down here if I can grab it that way I can get almost all of it out voila let me turn off my phone <laughs> I'm getting a bunch I'm in a group text thing you know how it is all right you guys what do you think Do 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 yay Oh, so if you arrived, if you have white denim, yeah, I would definitely make sure you have white jean zippers then. So we'll shorten the zipper when we get to the waistband. But let me try on my zipper. Oh, it's really high. Yeah, it feels good. You guys can do that, right? I know you can. No problem. Nothing to be afraid of. Just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Learn from me there. Okay, so uh, one of the ways you use to secure this uh, fly shield here is with your bar tack on the outside. And a bar tack is just a um, short length of tight zigzag stitches, kind of like what you see on one leg of your buttonholes. And um, I am not using my home machine right now, so I'm just going to do that with my single needle here. I'm gonna put it like, I just wanna make sure I, I'm gonna put it like right here. Just like that. Secure my fly shield. I actually think this fly shield's a little bit long, but it does cover up all the mess of your zipper down there. So, not bad. It is easy. You can totally do that, Gina. And I, I uploaded a video on just doing those steps, just like that. It's just a bunch of 
eight inch long straight stitches except for this curve right there that's it all right so where are we now we have our backs we have our front we almost have jeans you guys i mean fast it's been an hour a little over an hour that we've been doing this and look at this we almost have jeans so um heck yeah all right so i think i might switch back to a navy blue thread now and do my side seams and my inseams and uh, start with the waistband. So we can do that now. Has anyone here made uh, gender jeans or any other jeans? It's been a, I don't, you know, when I used to make jean patterns, I don't even know what pattern I use. Do you mean for the denim, Gina? Okay, so this denim I got from the workroom in Canada. It's a Japanese denim. Um, and I bought it a while ago, so I'm pretty sure they don't have it anymore. But I do think that on like the Closet Case Patterns website, they probably have some resources for you. Um, one of the gals watching right now, she works at my local uh, fabric store and they sell denim here and it's called Honey Run Quilters. You can try them. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's nice to be able to see it in person and see what you like. But um, I just saw someone post it on Instagram on, um, from the workroom and I wanted to do it. And I was like, okay, I trust that gal's fabric sourcing. And so that's why I did it. I just kind of blindly did it. And I have so much fabric. I don't know why I have so much. The zippers and hardware. Um, zipper, you can get the zipper at your local fabric store. If they're mostly uh, not a, like gonna do garment stuff, you can go somewhere like Joann's um, and online. And um, I'm pretty sure Honey Run has all the hardware as well, right, Rebecca? Don't you guys have like rivets and things like that? Pretty sure. Okay, so I'm gonna be less concerned with it matching here than I am with the matching at the yoke. And actually even better would probably be to match my stitching because look, it's a little bit off. So I may want to change that. Or what I could have done was top stitch this after the seam was sewn, you know, because then it would look. <laughs> you don't sew yet, Aline? You're so curious. <laughs> yeah, I'm having fun with that pun too. When I was trying to name the stream, I couldn't believe how many sewing puns there were. And I was like, oh man, it's like haircut salons, you know? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I don't really want it to be like that too much. Yeah, see, I feel like this one could be a little bit wider or this one could be a little bit narrower. Good reason to do this top stitching after. What do you think? I think I, I could remove it, but then I'll have a back stitch there. Do I want a back stitch or do I want it to line up? Yeah, exactly. So you might try them, Gina, Honey Run Quilters. They're here in Chico. And um, I, I buy things from a few online fabric stores, but I haven't bought any of this stuff, so I'm not sure. I think that there's um, forums and things like that specifically towards the ginger jeans and places to buy things. So you have to find a denim. I think that has a 2% stretch. Um, this feels like more than that. Um, and the black denim that I bought from Honey Run that I did my trial on felt a, a tad bit more than this, but not much. Uh, so, um, and it worked totally fine. I'm trying to decide if I want my, how, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to stitch it right there and see how bad it looks. <laughs> right? When all else fails, let's just see. See how it gets. Looks. Oh, that doesn't bug me. Does that bug you guys? <laughs> it's fine. I'm gonna be. It's gonna be fine. I'm gonna have jeans at the end. That's what matters, right? Oh, I switched my uh, stitch to a basting stitch. I want to go back. I could feel it. Definitely don't want to pop a seam in my jeans. 
So see here, all your seams are gonna line up a little better because remember I altered my waist a little bit, so it's kind of a steep slope. And um, when I surged first, that kind of also moves things. Just go, yeah, see so you go for it, exactly. Yeah, Gina, you should totally come. I, you guys are gonna learn that I am not about couture sewing or um, perfectionist sewing. I have been in that phase. It is awesome. I, lo I love the results. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like I have been sewing for over 30 years. And the biggest stumbling block I see for sewists is that they don't finish things or they're nervous to finish things or it's not good enough and they, they want to set it aside. And um, that you're never going to improve or get fast if you keep setting things aside. And so I'm more about finishing and wearing it and seeing what you like and what you don't like and the patterns that you choose and then the fit that you pick. And that way you end up becoming more productive and the more productive you are, the fewer mistakes you make. And I feel like it's a better, um, just, a, just a better flow. And then you can get more perfectionist about certain things. And there's certain things I am kind of, you know, a little bit more um, interested in getting perfectly right. Okay, so this needs some top stitching here. And if I do my side seams right now, it'll be really hard to do this this as top stitching. So I'm going to switch just the top thread and do that and um, hope that it works without switching the bobbin. So yeah, so I know like I've had people ask in the stream like, well, why did you skip that step? Um, sometimes I'm skipping steps just because I don't want to put you through um, my back being to you because I have to sew on a different machine or something. Um, but a lot of times it's because I know that I can probably do just as good of a job and um, we can keep the flow going, you know? I think that's important. Okay, so I'm going to top stitch my rise here. Now, if your machine has trouble with thicknesses, you're gonna wanna be really careful going over something like this. This is a lot of thicknesses. Um, I'm using probably a size 18 needle on my industrial machine. Um, you can get that size needle at the fabric store. You definitely want a new needle and you'll definitely want a heavier weight needle to do denim. And then um, in the closet case patterns um, instructions for the ginger jeans, they give tips on sewing with thicknesses for your home machine. And so I would try those things out, especially when you're doing something that uh, is lopsided. If it's thicker on one side, you could put a little piece of cardboard to kind of meet the other side of it. That way your machine's not kind of trying to compensate for those different thicknesses. Just know that there's, you know, there are, there are certain things that always work in sewing and there's, you know, quote unquote, maybe rules, but you can figure it out without having to figure out the right way to do it. You know, when we first started sewing vinyl here at Chicken Boots, nobody was doing that. I had no resources for that and I had to figure it out. And, um, you know, it gets hung up on your, um, oh my gosh, you guys, you didn't tell me that. Sheesh, I really flubbed this one up. Um, you know, what we figured out with vinyl was uh, that we needed a Teflon throat plate and a tef Teflon um, presser foot, uh, but they were kind of hard to come by. And um, what I ended up doing when before I got mine in was I put scotch tape on the underside of my presser foot and nail filed it smooth. And I'd have to replace it after a while, but that totally worked. So there was no rule for that. I just did it because I needed it done and I needed it done well and I needed it to stop being a chore. You gotta do what works for you. And you know, a lot of the little inventions that we have in home sewing right now, they didn't exist a few years ago. Sergers didn't exist, you know? They didn't exist when knits came out. So you actually don't need a serger to sew everything. Okay, this pocket is the worst pocket I've ever sewn, ever. <laughs> and I wanna fix it. I wanna fix that perimeter edge, but I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? <laughs> it's like looking pretty icky. The chalk is not helping. <laughs> but look at my little back decks on this curve. Ew. This one look the second one's always better. But it's so overexposed. Why didn't you guys tell me? Let me fix that.
Let's see. Ooh. What do you guys think? Is that a little better? Yeah, see, I think you're right, Rebecca. Did that help? It's still kind of overexposed, you know, it's because it's so dark. Oh yeah, it's too overexposed, let's see. Bear with me here. What are you guys suffering through this for? <laughs> That a little better? Tell me. <laughs> it's just so white right here. I need something like, yeah, let's put the cherry over there. Cherry pie. Does that even it out a little bit? <laughs> yeah, maybe I will just fix this perimeter edge right here. Um, because yeah, it's gonna bug me. Like I say, I don't like the eye to go to little things like a uh, stitching or a shiny metal zipper, um, you know, poking out of your fly or threads poking out of your pocket near your butt. I don't want people looking at my butt and my belly more than they need to. You know what I mean? Nobody really needs to at all. <laughs> yes, what? That looks better? You like that exposure better? Or you're telling me to fix it? There's a little bit of a delay, just so you guys know, like when I'm talking to you, it takes like five seconds for you to see what I say and do. It's just how it works. I can add a delay, but um, that's the minimal. Takes time to get out to the world, you know? So the funny thing is about this denim um, if you guys get denim, wash it a few times, um, cause here's my story. You can even see my thread is coming out a little bit bluish. Um, uh, I pre-washed this. Some of you know this story. Yes, looks better and fixed. Okay. <laughs> better light. Okay, good. Um, I, uh, washed my, this denim here and it wasn't quite dry. It was a kind of a big piece. And so I took my clothes out of the dryer and left the denim in there and put my next load in with these to dry with the just the denim. It had already been through the washing machine and it had already been dried once. Everything I put in the dryer with this denim turned blue. <laughs> and um, I've never seen that before, like where it would turn things in the dryer a color. So that's my cautionary tale. So I ended up rewashing my denim again and um, drying it and the inside of my washer and dryer is definitely blue now uh you know that happens i understand that but i've never seen like clothes in the dryer get that happen to them so uh like my napkins are all blue uh, my husband has a few surprises when he comes home from this trip waiting for him <laughs> so um that's my cautionary tale and then um the other the black denim i got for these bibs was so funny i pre-washed these and didn't have any issues with it and then um, when I was putting them on and I was standing in front of the mirror, one of the ties fell into the sink and it was wet in there. And so I picked it up really quick. I took a hand towel and <laughs> dried the end of it. And now there's a black stri or blue stripe actually on my hand towel from my this denim. So definitely treat your, uh, your new denim a little bit more, uh, you know, like wash it a few times. And the thing is like when we have a uh, pants that like we get from when we buy them retail, the reason that that's, that's not happening as badly is because um, I'm going to start my st back stitch right there. I think um, is because denim is, is uh, cut and sewn and then it's washed and treated to make it look worn out. They do enzyme washes and things like that. And that's how they get the look of faded denim and the little treatments and the striping and stuff like that. So it's done after, most likely it's done after the garment is sewn. We used to do it at one of the places I worked where I did kids wear. Um, 
it's fascinating stuff and it's the 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 things they can do at those places is really cool there's so many different services and they just come and go because of trends and things like that okay there's my pocket stitching i'm gonna pull it all out from the back too Okay, get it all that's not a permanent part of my pant. But see, look, I, can, I don't know if you can tell, but my thread's a little bit blue that I'm pulling out. So I probably should wash these again um, a few times. And maybe I'll wash them with my denim so my denim, my, my, my other pants <laughs> can get bluer. <laughs> okay, I just need a little scrap fabric to do my... First stitching when I switch my binding or my my bobbin. That was a piece of binding I used. All right, here we are, back on track. Okay, since it's already been sewn once, it's gonna be a lot easier this time. It sounds funny. Sorry, I'm just looking. Something's going on here. Maybe it's okay. There we go. I think um, the funny thing about all these uh, sewing things is that it's taking me longer to get photographs of things than it is to make the, to making them. <laughs> all right, there we go. That'll do. It's a little different. Live and learn, right? Okay. Okay. Look at my jeans. They look pretty good. Here's my fronts. Let's put them together. Should have worn my hair up today. It's a little too much, it's a little warm. I just got my hair cut, but and my bangs are a little bit short. <laughs> but I told her to do that. Otherwise, you'll see me cut my hair right here at the sewing machine. That's my. That's my. Uh, I don't really like it when my hairs touch my eyes, you know. And when I'm sewing and I'm looking down, it happens really often. So um, I end up sitting here at my sewing machine cutting my bangs. <laughs> All right, side seam time. And then I have pants, you guys. So what do you think of that? All right, so it's a 3 8 inch seam because remember I trimmed off a quarter, a little, a little under a quarter inch when I serged these. Good to remember that. I don't want to pull. I want to make sure that I'm just kind of slow sewing these in while they stay relaxed. What I saw that was really interesting on the uh, pattern instructions when I was reading it through um, was that um, I didn't know when I made my shorts that they um, ease the um, front and back rise together the inseam I should say but right here at the crotch area um, and so that's good to note like uh, there's a lot of times where I don't read the pattern instructions um, because I, I don't really need them because um, it's simple and even if the pattern drafter did it differently there's only really you know all paths will lead to the same thing so but um, I'm glad I caught that because you know, like the yoke, the fact that the yoke doesn't fit, 
I kept thinking that's me. You know, I cut it wrong. I cut the wrong size. I'm still not convinced I didn't cut the wrong size, but I did look. I looked at all my pieces. I looked at all my cutting, and they look fine. <clears throat> and um, so the, the if I had sewn this together from, you know, inseam around to inseam, they wouldn't have matched. And uh, that... That would have caused me to have to rip it back. I couldn't. I couldn't fudge that. You can't fudge one leg to the other. You you really do need to um, match it from the rise down from the center crotch seam. Okay, so I'm gonna flip these over. I'm gonna sew both my side seams from the top down because that's where I want everything to match. I'm not going to go from the top down on one side and the bottom up on the other because they could be mismatched. Um, you, you saw that my leg lengths were slightly different and that's probably because I just kind of cut it. Um, I know that I'm gonna adjust that. So sometimes I just leave extra without thinking. And so you definitely would want to sew the same direction as well so that if you have a little bit of stretch or any weirdness happening or your machine tends to push or it has some extra pressure, it's happening symmetrically. I'm all about symmetry. I may not be a perfectionist about certain things, but I do think like that if you come at your sewing from the same angle on both sides, you'll at least get a symmetrical effect. And that sometimes is uh, prevents more issues than you would realize. Especially if you're top stitching or matching things, um, it'll look better if it's you know symmetrical and if you come at it from the same angle. They're a little heavy, so I'm just trying to get all the weight up here on the machine bed. And you definitely would want a nice smooth seam. You don't want any bumps on your um, side seam, and because uh, they'll, you know, you'll get, you'll see those little bumps poking out on the sides. I don't like all these threads I'm finding. It's because probably my floor has a bunch of threads on them, and they touch the floor. I so actually swept my floor before I started because, whew, something touches the floor here. It gets pretty thready. Okay, so now we're going to do the rise. Um, and I should decide if I, I want to top stitch my side seam. I probably should because of the bulk of the seam. Let's see, is that, did this, that mismatch on the seam on both sides? Yeah, okay. That's good because of the bulk. I'm not sure if it's meant to do that, but um, I feel like that helps with the thicknesses of both these spots. So I think that I will uh, top stitch that now. And I'm just gonna do a single row. Double row is a, a little overkill on the side team. Unless one of you says, no, that's how my Levi's are and I have to do it. I'm gonna try and leave the bobbin um, the same color. See, so if you had two machines and you could have one with your top stitching thread and one with your other, sounding pretty decadent to me, but hey. My machine behind me here is not set up for straight stitch sewing. It's set up for binding. Okay. This would have been easier if I'd left one open, but uh, we're gonna get through it. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this under the machine first like this. Like that. That way it just gets easier and easier as I go. That makes sense? Okay, and I'm gonna push it to the back seam because that way um, the bulk is going to the back. I think when you do your inseam, you push the seam allowance to the front. This isn't too thick. It, it probably looks like it is and sounds like it, and, but it's actually not bad. Yeah, I always try and keep everything as flat as possible because it makes it straighter. 
and then I'm not like monkeying around with things. It helps, you know, that um, I have both my hands available for sewing. I don't have to, um, can you see that? I feel like, I'm trying to change the exposure there. Can you see? <laughs> it looks really dark. Um, my hands are free because I, you know, I, I don't have to use my hands to raise and lower the presser foot because my heels do that. Um, some machines have a knee lift, my old one did. And then um, I'm not using pins, so I really want it to be as easy as possible. So that's why I try and make nothing pulling on it right here. Nothing will ever get me to not use an industrial machine. I'm just going to tell you guys that right now. I love it. And anyone who's considering it, please contact me. I will tell you all the benefits about it, especially if you have your own sewing business. It's just the way to go. They cost the same as a nice home sewing machine. And um, <clears throat> they're just so, they're just ever so useful. And every person I know who has uh, switched has thanked me later and never gone back. <laughs> okay. I do have a home machine for buttonholes and things like that. Let's do my other side seam here. Can you see that okay? I'm trying to make sure my pants don't fall off the back eye machine because it'll pull it, it'll jerk it. You really just don't ever want that pressure on your needle. The needle has a lot to do and um, any kind of time you're bending it or anything, it can change the timing of your machine and uh, you could potentially break your needle, which can affect the timing and the timing's really important. All right. Here's my side seam. And then we're going to do our inseam. We're going to start from the center and work our way out because we know about that easing issue. I'm probably just going to put one pin in here. You know, I bought those clover clips, but I, uh, I haven't used them yet. Okay, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So this, this stitching right here, probably, actually, no, that's okay. I, they, they're off kilter from each other. So this is the front fly. Remember we stitch on this side and this is my back and I stitched on the right side as well. Um, I actually don't know what the norm is right there, but I kind of like that they're off kilter. No one's going to see it because it's the crotch right there. And it makes the bulk one go this way, one go that way. See my seam allowances. And then I like that. Like I, I'm kind of a big fan about that. I don't like all that bulk down there. It just makes them uncomfortable. So the way I'm going to figure out my ease, there is a notch, but I've lost that notch. I'm going to kind of match up the sights in there and see, see, I can see that kind of extra there. And uh, they want you to ease it like right up here at the top here. I'm going to go get the pattern pieces and look at the notches. I want to make sure I do that right. Because that's a comfort thing. They put that in there so that um, your pants will fit better. I have those wonder clips, yeah. Yeah, and you know, they're right here even. Yeah, I oh, that's true if you don't want holes in it, exactly. Um, <clears throat> I, I think it's just one of those things, like I've been doing it this way for so long that um, I haven't gotten on board with it yet. And I just need to try it, like maybe try it for a whole project. Okay, let me get my pattern pieces right back.
Okay, I was wrong. There's no notch. I thought there was a notch because I remember those <clears throat> and this, but um, there isn't a notch. So I'm just gonna, we're just gonna make it work. So that's what we do. So uh, the thing that I'm concerned about right now is that see how those were a little bit off. I want them to not be torqued. I don't want my legs to get torqued. Uh, so I'm going to kind of look at how these are laying. Because if I were to match that up, it might torque. You see that right there? I don't want that. So um, twill, uh, denim is a twill weave. And so it does have a tendency, if it's not cut straight on the grain, to torque. Um, and you don't want that to happen. Just got to make sure you cut your denim on the grain. And the best way to do it is to measure from your uh, length grain line that's um, printed on the pattern. This one right here with the arrow. Just measure from that point and from that one parallel to the selvage and make sure that they're uh, parallel. That length grain is parallel to the selvage and that way you will make sure that you're cutting things on grain. It's really important, especially on something like a knit because um, you can get a lot of torquing in knit. Okay, I'm gonna look at this one now. So I think what happened was that may, maybe my little my legs were a little bit um, off of the, like when I cut it, I think one was off. Like the, the fabric didn't come all the way. Stop that, what are you doing that for? <laughs> So I'm just looking to make sure that my leg looks like it's going to lay correctly. No torquing. You can kind of see it sometimes, you know, like it'll do something like, torquing is when it, you get these diagonal lines like this, you know? About some blue thread. <laughs> I just tie it off like um, like you do with your serger. A lot of home sewing machines are a little simpler to um, thread, so you don't actually need to tie it off. It's almost faster to not. Okay. Now that I got it under there and started, ooh, my pin came out here. <clears throat> then I'll kind of use that as like one of my anchor points and instead of pinning it, you know, right there. My machine's holding it the way I want, so that's why I'm doing that. And when you get these long pieces, you gotta kinda get ahead of it. So you see how this one's a little smaller than this one. That's what they're talking about with this easing. You're going to ease the back onto the front a little bit. That just gives you a little bit more room across your back thigh. These are pretty close fitting pants, just so you know. Made me a little nervous about them. I did the high rise version as well, just so you guys know. And it's not a high rise, it's actually um, still below the waist. So it's not technically a high rise, it's just higher than the other view, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. 
How do you uh, how do you guys top stitch these close quarters areas like this? Like this one, I I, I do want to top stitch this, um, but it will be pretty tight, you know. So now this would be a good opportunity. Like, you know how I was talking about symmetry and starting from one and going to the other. I kind of want to do that right now, but. Um, on your on this inseam, you know, it is perfectly understandable to just do a continuous seam like this, you know. But if you really wanted to make sure that that easing happened all in the same area and didn't get pushed down here to the bottom, you know, in your calf area or something like that, you could start from the hem, go up to the rise on one side, and then do the same on the other. And then that way you would know that you got all of the easing happening in that back seat area of your pants. I do have an automatic back tack. I don't use it. I like uh, being able to push right here, and I have a bigger one right here. Um, so that's why I'm not doing that. Okay, so I'm going to decide if I want to top stitch. I, I, I find top stitching um, in seams like this, like the, skin, the leg, really frustrating. Um, and I'm not sure I want to put myself through that. But it would reinforce the inseam. And that is always a good idea, especially when it comes to denim. So um, let's see how bad this would be if we started on one and went to the other. Cause see, look, I'd have to get into here. And maybe what we could do is do part of it, pick up and then, re and then um, keep going. Um, and I think I would do this in navy blue, not the contrast as well. The instructions don't tell you when to switch between contrast and um, matching thread for your, all your top stitching. Uh, so it's totally personal preference. On something like this, I think navy blue is totally fine to match. And then if I do do navy blue, actually, picking up and starting over again won't be as noticeable. Okay, so I think that you want to do it towards the front, if I'm not mistaken. So that means I go this way. So I'm gonna put myself through this and you too. You're along for the ride. You're in for the long haul, aren't you? No need to top stitch. So we just need to get as far as we can and then um, we'll switch from the inside of the pant. The trick with my machine is I don't want to uh, accidentally touch my back tack because it will happen. <laughs> okay, I'm getting, it's getting a little too tight. Let's hope I've gotten high enough. Okay. Can you imagine being a production sewer and doing this all day, every day, on hundreds of pairs of pants? Someone's doing that. There's a lot of people doing that somewhere. Ooh, yeah, we got we got pretty high up there. Awesome. It's hard to see. Sorry, guys. back tack where I stopped. I didn't back tack when I stopped um, on the first thing because I knew I was going to back tack when I started again. I'm trying, ow! My presser foot, it's kind of the worst thing about a machine. Not the needle, the presser foot. <laughs> there we go. Okay, back on track. We'll go as far as we can now. And then all we have left is the waistband. What do you mean another stitch on the seam allowance? Adding another stitch. What does that mean? I'm 
I'm waiting to see what you say. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to turn this on. I want to get this flat as possible there. Reduce that bulk as best I can. Uh, one of the interesting techniques they say to uh, reduce the bulk of your denim, especially if you have trouble sewing that on your home sewing machine, is to take like a rubber mallet and, um, you know, kind of tamp them down and kind of make them um, smoother. Uh... I think like you could, I mean, I'm, you, you mean just like reinforce it by doing another row of the seam? Yes. Um, that doesn't uh, reinforce it as well as doing a top stitch. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you could do that. Um, and I'm going to, just because of the friction, like a lot of my pants do, they don't fail at the crotch seam, but I see the top stitching fail. So I actually don't want to do something that sticks up above the seam. So I am doing, that's why I'm doing kind of a lower profile thread for the top stitching on this one. Um, but yeah, you could reinforce it a few times. You could do a triple needle stitch. I think that's kind of the old school way to do is do three rows of stitching all along the rise. Um, what's nice about top stitching this down is that it's going to lay flatter to the body, which is going to also make the friction less because it's more stable and moving around a lot less. Um, there's probably a whole science behind it that I'm unaware of. Oh man, I'm getting so hot right now doing this. This is so much work. <laughs> so on your home sewing machine, this is probably gonna be a really tricky step. I'm gonna be really honest with you because your, your home sewing machine um, isn't as stable. Like this, this guy's sitting here, this gal, she's like, she's not going anywhere. And that's kind of helping me do this. So uh, if you have trouble with your machine, um, things pulling out of the machine from underneath the needle, look to see if you have an adjustment right here. And, Cause that will um, adjust the presser, pressure of your presser foot. Okay. I'm going to now pull out and continue on from the inside. Make sure I go the right direction. <laughs> Ideally, your pants are going to fit well. You're not going to have any stresses or um, friction points, right? That's why we're making our own clothes, so that we can fit them the way we like. We made it. Yay. Should we look at them? Let's look at them. I saw that pin in there because of that pocket. You guys made me do that. It's all your fault. Just eating. Pretty cute. <laughs> Pretty happy with those. Those are cute. Okay, let's prep our waistband. We need to make our belt loops too. Get my trusty loop turner. I always think I don't use a lot of gadgets when I sew, but I realize I kind of do. I mean, I, I use this. I use my awl. I use the, the Choco liner. Not this one, but the other one. Um, I have the Wonder Clips, but I haven't tried those yet. And then those are probably, you know, besides my scissors and my seam ripper, I do use some of the... Um, gadgets. 
I have this one um, little tool that I just it popped into my head. There's somewhere buried here at the office it's from one of the phases I was into. I was really into um, trying some of the decorative techniques that you find um, in like uh, historical things. Um, and I was really into folkware patterns for a while, which I'm not sure are around anymore. I love those things. I learned a lot from them because they were traditional techniques. You know, before they had scissors, they had to, you know, tear the fabric. So that's why all pattern pieces with squares and rectangles and sleeves were this really interesting um, construction and pattern drafting. It was amazing learning about that. I could talk a lot about that. Um, but uh, I got into some of the decorative stuff. And one of the things that I got into was ribbon embroidery. Um, I wasn't that great at it, but I loved doing it and I added it to a bunch of stuff for a while. And then the other thing I got into was um, stitching a Celtic knot on something or something similar of that. And I would use bias, finished bias, and then double needle stitch on it onto things. And um, I was just thinking like now that there's these twin needles, dang, you could have a lot of fun with that, those bias bars. They're called bias bars. And so what you do is you do something like this. You you uh, take a piece of bias fabric and you um, stitch it into a tube. And you don't actually have to turn it right side out because um, my little my thing here is a little off now. Um, am I still hooked? No, I'm not still hooked. Um, you don't have to turn it right side out because what you do is you you stick this bias bar. You put it's like a flat piece of metal and it's the width of what your bias is going to finish. You stick it in there, you center the seam on it, and then you iron it, and then, then your bias is showing. So you would sew it right sides out, obviously. And then you stitch it to things. And so like where I first did it was I put a Celtic knot on my the baby quilt. You know, when my daughter was born, everyone made quilt squares. And um, that was her name square, was her Celtic knot. I, the Celtic knot thing was really interesting because they were never ending, you know. So fascinating. Okay, the trick with these loop turners is it, when it's thick fabric like this, you can't let it get bunched up here. I love this thing. It's the first time it's failing me for you guys. But um, otherwise it's like magic. But this denim is a little bit thick. And so you can't let too much of it. You have to just do little bits like this. And then it'll kind of get going a little bit better. And you also don't want it to get unhooked. So this little, this loop turner has a little clasp on the end and it clips to the end of my thing I'm turning. Oops, and it pulls off sometimes like that. I'm almost there. All I gotta do is get it to here and then I can pull on it and <laughs> not with this little wire. But it's um, in general, not right now, but it's faster than a, um, and easier to use than a um, safety pin, you know? I'm trying to get it hooked back on there. It's a really sharp hook too, so it usually grabs it. But I just gotta make sure I'm using the right end. Look at that. Sorry guys. Maybe I should use no belt loops. Maybe this is a sign. I don't need belt loops. Oh, the little clasp is stuck behind the thing. That's what happened. I've never had that happen. Okay, there we go. No wonder. I had lost my hook. Okay. I think I'm back in business now. It's like watching a, a snake digest a gopher. Can you see it going through right there? <laughs> We use this for our handles of uh, bags and stuff, but it's usually really fast. You just pull it through and it usually comes in one fell swoop. Okay, so now I got to the end. I can take off um, this, the loop turner. And then I can just pull on it like this, but you still need to just do a little bit when it's thick fabric, you still need to do a little bit. That doesn't change no matter what you're using. If you let too much bunch up, it just gets stuck. Look at how blue I'm getting, you guys. 
<laughs> and I've already washed this twice. Sheesh. All right, let me iron this. I have blue thread on, right? Yeah. All that warms up. Anyone keeping track how many times I've changed my thread color? But I definitely want to double top stitch my belt loops in yellow, right? I get, you, do you guys get that question? Those common question I get is, uh, have you ever sewn your finger? Yes, I have. I've sewn my finger. It was bad. Um, <clears throat> it's rare. I think in 30 years, I've sewn my finger maybe three times. Like, human instincts take over, people. You don't sew your finger naturally, you know? <laughs> uh, the last time I did was the worst time I ever did, and it was because it was on the binding machine. Iron in my belt loop here. Yeah, but so the thing I worry about is um, not sewing my finger, but when my finger sometimes will get pushed up against, uh, and I think, yeah, the um, old machine, the screw used to come out like about this much, and that is what I hated was when um, the presser foot would whack my um, off hand into that screw. That hurts more than sewing your finger. Because the sewing finger, it's just through the tip of your skin. It's no big deal. Um, it, I mean, it can be. I know, I know I'm downplaying that. But <laughs> um, most likely, it's like the repeated uh, whacking of my hand on that, uh, on that uh, screw. And I noticed that they've made the screw flush now. I'm so glad. I wasn't the only one, apparently. I don't like how thick my seam allowance is in there. I'm not a fan. All right, full confession, you guys. The thing I'm most nervous to sew in front of you is the waistband. <laughs> the zipper fly, no problem. The waistband, not my favorite thing. And I didn't get to do it with you guys the other day on my shorts because I realized um, I wanted to try them on before I did the waistband. And I'm glad I did. Like, they needed some fit adjustments, and that would have been a lot of extra time had I not. I hear something funny. I keep hearing it. Let's look at our bobbin. No, it's fine. I feel like I'm uh, knitting with uh, indigo dyed yarn, and that's why my hands are turning blue. Do you guys ever have you guys ever knit with indigo dyed yarn? It's kind of a magical thing. Like you know, it's been been, been indigo dyed, which is really cool. Okay, so this is hasn't been trimmed down. I'm gonna trim this down. I do not like the width of this waistband. That's a personal thing. Oh, and I didn't have enough fabric for my waistband uh, facing, so I have to seam it in the middle. Just making sure I got the right one. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that. Wait, did I just do that? No, 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 I did that right, right, okay. Whoops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Whack! Um, do you guys need the brightness up? Why did it get so dark? Why don't I have a studio, babe, figuring all this stuff out for me? That is the real question I ask you. See, I'm turning the brightness up, you guys, a little bit. 
right? That's way better. It's a little bit cockeyed now. I'm trying to give you as much surface area as possible. Um, while still getting close. Okay. All right, you guys, I know I'm being a wimp with the waistband. I'm gonna trim it down though, three quarters of an inch. The, the width I like. And if you're going to uh, make your waistband narrower, you need to do it from the top edge. You need to do it from the top edge, not the waist edge, because that was um, measure that has to measure to fit your waist. And this won't. This will be a little big because I took out the two and a quarter inches as well. Yeah, see? Yeah, I know. You guys need to tell me if it gets too dim because the thing is I have a big light right here above me and a big light right here. So it looks dim to me anyway because everything looks really bright in front of me. I saw this really interesting tip today on Instagram where this gal um, gets little um, magnets from the hardware store. And I was thinking like, I actually have magnets right here for pattern holders. And um, like she puts them on her scissors like this and, and they're like little round cylindrical um, magnets. And so they would stack right on top of each other. And then she can kind of look and see if she's doing um, the right width that she wants. Can you kind of get the idea of what I mean? Like she can, so like hers would have been spot on there. Like this is three quarters of an inch. You're probably not going to put three quarters of an inch worth of magnets on there, but you could. Um, I thought that was so clever. Um, the only thing I worry about is I don't like my um, scissors getting magnetized. I, I don't use magnetic pin cushions. I'm definitely against those. Sorry. I know people love it. It's just nap time. <laughs> and um, I uh, don't like it when um, you get magnets near your pins, then your pins get magnetized, everything around them like your scissors, and then the, the, the pin gets stuck to your scissors, and say you're cutting, and you don't see that pin on the back side, and it goes right into your blades, and you nick your blade, and your scissors are ruined in a lot of cases. They're not usable until you get them fixed. So um, I am not a fan of magnetic pin cushions and I'm really sorry I know that's an unpopular view um, but that's just my experience after ruining a few um, pairs of scissors I didn't ruin a few pairs why does this look funny did I put that in upside down I mean I know it's not like perfectly straight right there but that is right right yeah This, see his denim curving? Weird. Yeah, it's brilliant, right, Gina? It's really cool. I thought that was such an interesting tip. I was like, oh, how's she doing that? You know, what she they were showing was her um, cutting out a little uh, pattern piece. I don't want to get dye on my face. <laughs> um, a little pattern piece, and she was adding seam allowance to it as she was cutting it out because, you know, a lot of European patterns don't come with seam allowance, so maybe she's European. I don't know. Maybe she's just using a European pattern. Um, but, yeah, they um, – she, or, you know, and like in, in, in garment school, you don't add seam allowance till the very end. And so you might want to cut a few out and check it out. And that would be kind of a nice little way to do it. Add your seam allowance as you're cutting it out without having to draw it on there. But you're magnetizing your scissors. So be warned. Oh, I have blue thread down there, right? I'm just procrastinating because I don't want to sew my waistband on in front of you guys. That's all. That's what's happening here. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's attack this thing. I cut that really badly. 
Um, and I know my waistband's not gonna fit because I trimmed my waistline down, but I'm just gonna sew it like normal. And then we're going to uh, trim it down when we get there. So I also put my uh, waistband on a different cross screen so that it stretches even less. I would like a um, center notch right here. So I'm gonna put one where it's folded. That way I have a, a little milestone, so to speak, when I'm sewing. Because the quilting cotton doesn't have any stretch in it. It's why I'm using it. I'm kind of looking at the width of my waistband and trying to even out my bad cutting job I just did. <laughs> me and my shortcuts. Okay. I'm gonna trim my corners. And um, actually what I'm gonna do too is, um, I'm gonna overlock this edge right here. Uh, I think one of the um, things I like about sewing, like one of the little things I, how I like to sew a waistband is I do like clean finishing. Usually I do like to clean finish like a waistband or something. But um, when I'm home sewing it and say I want to make adjustments later, I find when I clean finish it, it's a lot more work to have to take it apart if I want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlock this edge and I'm going to leave it flat. This also cuts down on the bulk on the inside of the waistband. So to be clear, I'm going to overlock this edge and when it's sewn in my shorts, it's going to hang straight down rather than get turned under and top stitched. Um, it also makes it, it's an easier way to sew it. So if you also, like me, don't really like sewing really long things that have a tendency to get weird, um, that's a great way to guarantee that you've taken that step out of the equation. So I'm just going to overlock this really quick with navy blue thread. Yeah, I know cream thread would be nicer. Okay, and so uh, partly what remind me, reminded me of doing that was that I still am going to turn under the first little bit here because at my waistband where it meets, I would like that to be a little more clean finished. So I'm gonna turn that under. And this just kind of gives me, it just sets me up better. Um, but the thing is, my waistband is too um, long right now. So I'm not going to go to a lot of effort right now working on this. And the best place to have shortened my waistband would have been right here. Because that's where I made my back waist smaller. So just so you know, wherever you make your waist smaller, that's where you want to make those adjustments. So now we're also going to shorten our zipper and when it comes to brass zippers, that's a little trickier. So, um, cause you cannot sew through brass like you can with other um, things. Oh, my, uh, my belt loops, my belt loops. Yay, my belt loops. Let's read the instructions about these. <laughs> how many, how many do I get? 
I didn't, I read these instructions and I didn't see them, but I wasn't looking for them either. My belt loops, my belt loops. Okay. Because I want to put them in my waist seam here and then top stitch them at the top. Is that how they do it? Well, they don't. Interesting. Okay, maybe I'll follow the instructions then. <laughs> don't let me forget my belt loops, people. I need a belt. I know me. Okay. Okay, so do I want to do it from this side or the other side? I'm going to start from this side. I'm kind of tempted to sh uh, shorten my back waist at the center back waist. So um, in uh, tailoring, they will often have a seam right here at the back waist in nice men's pants like really upscale pants and that's because it's easy for them to take it in or let it out right there and they'll have like a really wide seam allowance and so um i'm kind of tempted to do that on my my pants you know it would be an easier place because if i end up wanting to adjust this later on all i would have to do is do it from the center back waist and not touch the front and so that would be a great way to set it up right now because what i could do right now is walk this around see how much it's off and then I'll whack that much off. So when I say walk around, I just kind of match the seam like this. This is a pattern drafting term. See, look at that. Ooh, this looks so much smaller. Why is it that much off? I only took off two and a quarter. better fit me so my fly shield needs to lay flush like that maybe I should uh, overlock this right now yeah I probably should huh just in case I have trouble later getting it in there let me overlock this little weirdo pocket piece we have now like we meant to do it because <laughs> it's overlocked. <laughs> there we go. See, like, oh, now it's totally that oh, we meant to do that, right? Okay. All right. So where's my, uh, yeah, there's my pants here. So I'm just walking my waistband still. I'm gonna stitch this down um, just so I have less to uh, fiddle with right now because we want to focus completely on our waistband. So I'm just gonna stitch this whole pocket thing down right here. Don't have to worry about it. And my fly shield. And this gives you your first hint of getting near your brass zipper. So I'm going to um, walk my needle past it into the little space between the teeth and then keep going. And I'm going to trim it right now, right there. So I just got to make sure that this is secure. Otherwise, I can lose my zipper. My zipper head right off of the zipper, and that would not be good. Um, the zippers we have here, that's how we deal with them, but um, this is not a zipper designed for that. Like getting your head back on a brass zipper is tricky to say the least. Okay, I'm going to secure this one too so I can cut this excess off now. Just like that.
Sorry if I'm off camera a little bit. How's the exposure doing? Exposure's doing a little better now, huh? All right, so let's look at our waistband again. I promise I'm not procrastinating. I'm kind of shocked why it's so big though. I'm a little worried about that. I only took an inch off each back there. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Oh yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna, yeah, because we're gonna do the back waist seam now, we're gonna treat it like a pair of tailoring pants. I'm gonna fix that right there. Fix it meaning um, make it permanent. Not fix it like it's an error. So it's a really good idea to stay stitch your waist. Um, I haven't really stay stitched the whole waist. Parts of it are with the serger and the top stitching, but because it's a stretch, it would be pretty good to, um, pretty good idea to stay stitch your um, waistline of your pant because of that stretch. Okay, so that side seam that side seam notch matched right there perfectly. Can you see my little notch right there? It matched perfectly, which is great. Good news. <laughs> Why is this pinned this way? Okay. And that one matches right there too. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, so that's that's about what I got. I took out. Uh, I took out a little bit um, less than that, um, but the denim's gonna relax. That's probably what's going on there. I'm not surprised. I know I only took out an inch on each side. And if it was meant to fit the um, yoke and that weird length that mine is, um, then that could make the waistband off. Remember how I told you that my yoke didn't fit and I had to trim it? That could be part of it too. Okay, so the way I'm gonna do this, a little bit of surgery, is I'm gonna take out this seam here. And I'm gonna want this seam to line up where um, the waistband hits the pant because it'll look a little bit better and because it'll make it a lot easier to alter later on if I need to. But the waistband is not symmetrical. One side is a little bit longer than the other because of the fly. The fly shield makes you have an extension to your waistband and that's where the under part of the waistband goes underneath the button and buttonhole area. I feel like I need to get better at explaining things. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not known for using my words. <laughs> okay, so this is so much to cut off the back waist that I'm going to double check it now that I know what my plan is. And I'm probably going to leave a really wide uh, seam allowance. Maybe, maybe not. I'm thinking about it. These are not men's tailoring pants. But why should they get all the easy outs, right? Pun intended. And you know what? Maybe I will stay stitch this waistline since I tell you it's a good idea. I'm gonna follow my own advice here. I'm gonna do it just inside the seam line. And I really, 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 in this step, don't want the denim to pull and get stretched out as I'm doing it. So I want all the weight of my garment up here on the machine. Especially with this back yoke right here. You guys hanging in there? 
So cute, aren't they? Pretty happy. Okay, let's get rid of this right here. Now I'm gonna double check my waistband and um, do it this time. Pinning it from the de denim to denim. And I pin it starting at the seam where it's going to end. And then I'm going to uh, look for my uh, side seam notch, which I know is really tiny if it's there at all anymore. I think it's right there. See, so the, the denim is, is very stretchy. Don't want to lose some of it, but I also don't want it to get stretched out and I don't want it to get wavy when I sew it in. Not sure if that's my notch or not. It seems a little bit too far off. Because remember, I took my, I cut my waistband out on the um, other grain lines to get rid of some of that. I, I literally have pants I love. Um, they're really comfortable. They're really high quality stretch denim um, and um, they don't stretch out all day long. Like they, they stay put. But I will say like one of the pairs I have by them was this like they did like a different, you know, like denim comes a different um, style. Every once in a while you get the skinny leg and the boot leg and the, the w other fits. Well, one of my pair, um, is stretchy enough that I don't even need to unbutton them <laughs> to take them on and off. <laughs> and I don't want that to be like this. And it's not like they're gonna fall off me. They just, they're just stretchy enough and um, it's just, I don't know. It's a little too stretchy. My mom has this really strict policy on wearing stretchy things. Um, she's And she's tiny, you know, like she's a really petite person. But when um, leggings came out and like, I wanna say like the, late 80s um they were like the thing where like girls wear now you know leggings under like a sweatshirt or a tunic or whatever super cute and she jumped right on that she was a really busy mom she had two small children i was in high school and um you know they were comfortable they were cute looked adorable on her but she swears because of that fa fad <laughs> She gained five pounds because she couldn't tell that, or, um, you know, with the stretch that she had. And um, she is a really tiny person. She's, you know, it's no big deal. But, you know, still it is a big deal to her, you know. And then stretch denim was invented. And the same thing. Like, she's like, no, I can't. I'm not doing this, you know. Like, I don't want stretch clothes because I don't know if they're, like, I'm staying the same size. And, um... I think that's really funny because it's almost impossible now to find pants that aren't stretchy. And I think about that when I'm wearing them a lot. I'm like, oh, shoot. Okay, so that's my, that's my waistband right there that I'm going to trim off. That is actually how much I brought in my waistband. This way makes way more sense. I'm really glad I did that again. And that's what I want it to finish. So I don't want to cut it there. Remember, you always have to think about where your seam is and where your seam allowance is. It's why we get kind of into trouble sometimes. So I'm going to cut off a parallel amount and I'm going to include my seam allowance there. There we go, it's gone. And I'm going to take this amount and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm just going to use this as a template. Like that. 
Anyone have that stretch um, denim issue as well? <laughs> I've been craving knitting again lately, but, um, oh, see, that's what it is, is that my seam isn't in the middle over here. Why is that? I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to have two seams in my back waistband since we're doing this on the fly here. It looks, looks like I pieced it together. <laughs> Well, and I kind of had to because I really wanted this to be my lining of my waistband, but um, I didn't have enough. I thought I did, and um, otherwise I wouldn't have committed to it until I got all the way done. I was like, oh, shoot, I don't have enough, but I love this fabric. Interestingly, this uh, fabric print is printed sideways on the fabric. So I fixed it on the, not fixed it, but like I made it so that they're right side up on the pockets. Alrighty, and now I'm going to sew this back together. A little wiggly there. Got a lot going on here. A lot to uh, hold in my hands here. I'm going to put these seams open so that they're as flat as possible. Now I could top stitch that seam, just make it part of a design detail, or I can just pretend like it's not even there and just include it in my waistband. And I don't think anyone's ever going to really notice. You know, I could um, iron it flat or top stitch it. If I top stitch it, it makes it harder to um, fiddle with later on if I end up wanting to take it in or out. I can go overboard with top stitching. It's kind of my MO, but um, I'm not going to do that here. Okay. So now we're going to sew our waistband on. I procrastinated way too long. I know you guys are like, I need to eat lunch. Get on with this. And I'm going to be really careful going over this uh, zipper here. In fact, I'm going to do it from the other side because I, I uh, don't want to break my needle. And I can also now see where my um, start and stop of my waistband is. So uh, this is another little matching thing. You need to make sure that your waistband is the same width at the center front. Okay, I can't see my um, zipper here. There we go. Okay, we made it. Another reason to have your pins always perpendicular to seam, because if I if you change which side you're going to sew it on, it's not going to matter. You can just sew right over them. And at least I can see where my stay stitch was, so I can include that and not worry about it showing. Take that pin out. So do you feel like the pace of these are good or slow? Could they go faster? Um, or do you want me to start slowing down more? I mean, I've tried to slow this one down all day today. Um, make sure I'm doing it all. I mean, I'm not going, I know I'm not going really slow. Don't worry, I, I know that. Um, but um, if you want me to break these um, bigger garments into like two part streams, I'm happy to do that. We can even start another garment in the halfway point. The great thing about it is that it's going to live on YouTube now um, as one whole upload. Okay, so I'm actually going to look at my waistband at the beginning and see um, how close to um, the width I have matching right here. See that? And they don't match at all. So this is a good chance. This was a good chance to do this right now. This one's narrower, so I'm going to continue with this one. And remember my shoddy cutting job? That probably has a lot to do with it. 
Okay, good. You like the pace. Awesome. Good to hear. Thanks, Gina. Okay, so I'm going to take out my pins right now. Get those out of the way so they stop poking me. And then I'm going to adjust the width of my waistband. Because, you know, it's better to do it now than after you've done your buttonhole. And then you notice that when you put the button placement behind it, you're like, oh, those don't match at all. <laughs> I've never done that before. <laughs> okay, so, okay, thanks, Rebecca, for saying that. Okay, so see my waistband doesn't match at all because of my shoddy cutting job. But what I can do is match this one to this one by sewing to there and then trimming it like that. I know you guys are going to do a much more accurate waistband than me. I really did a kind of a Frankenstein job on this thing. The other thing I want to make sure is that my waistband is going to match the center front, which it does. And that's probably because when we sewed our fly, we were pretty consistent with that. Okay. Let's see. It's a little lower. It's okay though. I still feel like that's a little taller. Let's turn it right side out and see. where we're at because once we have the top stitching on there's kind of no going back we don't really want to deal with it after that you know what I mean I'm gonna make it a tiny bit narrower I'm gonna blend it in a little further back too no one's gonna see this inside here Thank goodness. We're not entering it in the county fair. We're not going to show our grandma who taught us how to knit sew. We're not going to post this on Instagram. <laughs> right? <laughs> We're going to sew our first pair of jeans together. And they're going to be glorious no matter what. Because gosh darn it, we sew jeans today. Okay, I'm going to clip my corner here so I can actually turn this. And I'm actually going to reinforce this corner right now. I don't like that. Okay. I want a continuous stitch right here. That's why. Like that. Now I'm going to turn it. I use my awl to do corners. You got to be careful. I'm going to pin that down so I can really see what the width is. So none of this is the part I'm dreading doing in front of you. It's the next part. <laughs> because I know this is going to be hard because the lining doesn't stretch. The outside does stretch and it's really long and it's going to get crazy. I know it. I just know it. You're gonna hold my hand, right? So yeah, I'm not liking this waistband right now. I do like this width though, but I'm not liking this shape right here. I kind of thought I fixed that when I just did it. It probably doesn't look as off to you guys because you can't see it the way I can see it. But I think I'm just going to take it down a tiny bit more right there. Right where the um, fly shield kind of attaches. Like that. I think that was it. That was the clencher. Okay.
<laughs> right? Well, I don't know. I mean, the Wonder Clips, I can't really, it's already attached. The waistband's already on there. And I'm really glad that um, I didn't that time just because I ended up sewing it from the other side that I had the pins on. So I, I, need, I, need, I need to try those Wonder Clips. I promise I will. I promise. I even bought the big box. I committed. <laughs> you like them too, Gina? That's awesome. Rebecca, do you use Wonder Clips or do you use pins? I know you've been sewing a while, so I'm going to guess pins. But I know you work in a fabric store, so you might use the Wonder Clips maybe when you use quilting. I've been live for almost three hours. You guys are troopers. Okay, so um, now is the moment of truth. So, I uh, feel like I figured this out a long time ago, that, like what I prefer, and I can't remember what it is, because I felt like I figured out a trick, like when I do the top stitching on the edge, it helps making this bottom easier to sew. But, um, oh, you use them when you're surging. Oh, that's smart. Um, I don't use anything when I'm surging because I'm sure you know why. Because I don't want to surge anything off in the serger, especially a pin. Because that blade is $35. How do I know that? <laughs> because I've surged a pin before. No, I actually, mine just got dull and I bought it recently. Okay, let's time, time to open this button fly though. Let's see. I mean the zipper fly. That dated me saying button fly. <laughs> Your chips and coffee clips. Are they that strong? Wait a minute. Oh. They're not very they're not very deep though. You know what I use? I got these things from IKEA a long time ago, and it's like a, a little clamp like this. And so then you can just put the whole thing on top of the bag bag of chips and then you clamp it and shut it. That's what I use for my chips. Cause I don't, the big chip clips are so bulky. I like these little clamps or like little alligator mouths um, without the sharp teeth. Okay, I think that um, I should iron this. You're <laughs> like, yeah, clothespins. Yeah, whatever happened to clothespins? They're only in art projects anymore. Hmm. I'm trying to remember my trick because I, I did a lot of uh, jeans at one point in my life. Pants, jeans, whatever. And um, I feel like I figured that out. Get rid of these threads here. The navy blue thread's not even bugging me like I thought it would. See, so this is what I mean. Like, I left that. I'm going to leave this flat, but I'm going to turn it under right just at the beginning right there because I don't want them to I don't want this edge to flip out to the outside of the garment I've listed all my pet peeves today you know them that's one of them so I'm gonna pin this all and I'm kind of pulling the waistband like this because I want that edge here to be nice and crisp and then I'm pulling the lining down into the inside and then I'm going to iron it and make sure it's where I want it and then I'm going to top stitch it down. See, I, I feel like I couldn't use Wonder Clips right here because I'm in the middle, right? That's not the ideal use though. Yeah, yeah, see, I know that serger blade is no joke and you cannot sew without it. So it's not like you can go, oh, I'll just do it without for a while. <laughs> And uh, sometimes they take forever to get there too. But I'm really surprised at um, how long they last because I've only replaced mine once and I've had my serger for a really long time. I love that serger. It's, it's more serger than I need. Like when I bought it, I was doing a lot of prototyping for um, clients in the garment industry. And so I really needed the prototype to look just like it would look in a factory. Um, because you cannot give a factory a sample and say, oh, but 
Um, you're going to do this right here. They will sew it exactly like the sample. It doesn't, it just doesn't matter. It's really rare that that, you know, you can hand it something not exactly how you want. And so, um, and I, my, all of my clients were new to the garment industry. So I needed to set them up to succeed because they didn't talk the lingo. It's hard for them to get their foot in the door in the garment industry. People really like just dismissed them because they didn't have a professional pattern. So they would come to me, get their professional pattern and all their spec sheets and all their prototypes. And then the factory would be like, oh, hey, you know what you're doing. You got all the stuff. And then um, they would have a shot at getting their product made and then kind of starting. And then once a factory took them on, they would leave my services because the factory usually has an in-house pattern drafter. Sorry, I'm telling you boring stories. <laughs> Uh, but I got my serger because I needed to be able to use a cover stitch and um, serger. And, you know, right after I bought it, I realized it was just too much. Like, I really wished I had gotten two machines, a serger and a cover stitch. It would have cost me the same because um, it was a really expensive serger. And um, I would have not had to convert it and go back and forth. And I had, the, I had enough space to have the second machine there. Now I would never use that cover stitch except for home sewing stuff. You know, like I would never use it in work, but um, it could have sat here, you know, so. My serger will hold nine cones of thread. I ask you, who needs to hold nine cones of thread? It does all these weird stitches that I just, I'm not interested in. Um, it does something called a wave stitch and it is really cool looking, but I have never ever used it. I have only used the um, serging, the four thread and the three thread uh, cover st uh, stitching overlocking. <laughs> okay, Gina, you're just humoring me. I know it. I can talk about the garment industry a lot. Um, and then I used it for a marrow edge, which I know you guys probably don't call it that. And I can't think of what other people call that. And they may call it a narrow hem, but it's not a narrow hem. Like a narrow hem is a rolled hem to me. Um, but a marrow edge looks like, um, it's also called lettuce edging, like lettuce, um, um, you know, like lettuce you eat. Um, so it does this ripple stitch. Um, no, it's not a husky lock. It's a baby lock evolve. Yeah, I know. It was an expensive machine. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, and, and I got like the extra like um, a package on it to like warranty and stuff so that I could get extra help just in case. So it set me back a few thousand dollars. But it's still a rock solid, amazing machine. I have had it since uh, before my daughter was born. My daughter will be 16 in November. So like a satin stitch and a satin stitch is a zigzag stitch on f on a flat garment unless there's a serger version of that that I don't know about stitches names have changed lately because um that's why the marrow isn't called that I had a um I used to do patterns for fabric designers as well fabric designers don't always do their own patterns <laughs> and so um I did one for this really popular pattern designer, but and she kept saying, oh, and this is gonna have a narrow hem. And every time I was like, how are you gonna put a narrow hem there? She, I think she thought I was an idiot. And um, I thought, um, I just I just wasn't understanding, especially when I saw what it was, I was like, oh, you mean a marrow, marrow edge. And she's like, no, I want a, roll, I want a narrow hem. <laughs> We finally realize, and this is my whole thing, lingo isn't everything. Everyone speaks differently. Communicating is more important. It doesn't matter if you're using the right word or not. And that is why I did um, pattern drafting and garment design and designing for anybody who wanted it because I really wanted everybody to have that chance. Okay, that's my boring stories. And <laughs> I have to do my waistband. I can't put it off any longer. But it looks really nice. Okay, I'm really glad I pinned it. Um, I'm gonna iron it. Just so I can practice. Now I'm procrastinating. I know, I know, I'm terrible. You guys just wanna go. You're like, I wanna go to the pool. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Maybe it's the pumpkin patch, I don't, I don't know. 
Ooh, they look so good, you guys. I've got jeans. We use tack buttons on our accordion circular needle case, so I can actually put a tack button on these, but I find tack buttons to be really high profile, and I'm not a big fan of them on jeans. They catch on everything for me. I'm Like I said, I'm kind of a klutz. I'm not kind of a klutz, I am a klutz, and so I just try and minimize anything that's gonna make me do that. Yes, there is a marrow stitch machine. That's why I call it a marrow stitch, uh, because we had a marrow machine when I worked in the, it's really popular stitch in children's clothing. So like, here's a great example. You know how sometimes you'll see like a baby clothes and it has that really ripply edge and it's not a ruffle that they attached. It's just that there's like, it looks like really tight surging on the edge or overlocking on the edge of the fabric. That's it. So what it does, is they do it on the cross grain of the fabric and the fabric stretchy and so while the machine it's going through the machine it's stretching out that edge and it goes and it ruffles and so it looks like lettuce you know like that you eat it's also called marrow I have to show you guys my ironing setup. I just got this uh, wool felt board from uh, the, the fabric store I mentioned earlier, Honey Run Quilters. I love it. Um, I don't have a lot of space right here to have a full size um, ironing board. I have one here at the shop. But here, I'll show you. I'll show you. Can you, did you hear what I said? <laughs> um, uh, let's go this way. So see, look at that. This is my microphone, so ignore this right here, but this is this wool felt pad, and then I use this for curves, and then that's that's it. That's my ironing setup right now. I'm, I'm, I'm really into it. I love how flat that wool felt thing is. It also smells like sheep when you um, iron on it. <laughs> All right, yep. Here we go. Okay, so one thing I remember from my days of sewing waistbands is don't start right here because I don't really like having the back tack there. Oh, I need to do this in yellow, don't I? Oh, oh, that means everything's gonna show. Yes, yeah, so I'm really liking that ironing board setup, and then I got the little sleeve board, or it's like a sleeve board ham cross for doing necklines and things like that. Yeah, I'm really into it, Rebecca. I, I think I looked at it like four times and I kept thinking about it because of the price and because I wasn't sure how I would like having such a flat surface. But um, I was using like one of those little miniature ironing board tabletop ones and it kept collapsing. I was just over it, so. So let's see, I think I'm gonna start this. Um, where am I gonna start? What is that? It's a flaw in the fabric. There's a little slub there. I think I'm just going to start right here on the side seam. It's got caught in the serger. Because we're doing the contrast stitching, um, I'm going to start away from the front because the back, st back stitch can um, show worse. I'm trying to decide if I want to sew a little bit. I don't think I need to because it's not going to show. Yeah, actually I do. I do. I don't want the inside to look mess too messy. So when I change my bobbin and change my thread, sometimes it, it adds a little extra to thread. All right, this is it. Maybe I'm just procrastinating because I don't want to say goodbye to you guys. All right, here we go. I'm going to push this pin a little bit further that way. How's the exposure? Oh, not too bad. It's pretty bright right now, but this is probably a good time for it to be kind of bright. So when I'm doing this, I'm making sure all of my weight is up here. I'm not worried about any of that pulling on the needle. And I'm also making sure that it's all flat because I feel like that's sometimes how things get a little wonky 
is that we make we don't make sure everything around the needle head is um, nice and smooth and flat and it gets in at an angle like this or something like that. Uh, I'm totally guilty of doing that. Yeah, Gina, it's really cool. I like that thing. And you know, it's made by someone in um, Oregon called Woolly Felt Wonders, I think. Um, there's even typos on the packaging, which I thought was kind of endearing. Um, and uh, I think it's like a, a place that does farmy things like that, like sheep related things. So kind of cool. This denim is so much easier to sew than those other ones were. Okay, so now I'm getting to my um, zipper teeth here. I'm also getting to my beginning thing and I really want it to look good. So I'm gonna kind of tuck that in there. I'm tucking the seam, the seam allowance on the inside. I'm gonna get to the teeth and I'm gonna walk it over. It got pushed down a tiny bit, but um, that's just sometimes how it goes with the uh, brass teeth. The brass teeth of the boss there, not me. <laughs> Move all my stuff here because it's about to go through the machine head. <clears throat> Not ideal. <laughs> you love any, I know. Um, yeah, they go on last. The belt loops go on last, Rebecca. I, I almost put them in with the waist seam and then top stitched them here. I don't think they're long enough for that. So I'm gonna do it the way they recommend doing it. Uh, they also, of course, recommend using a bar tack, which I don't have on this machine. This machine is single needle. Single needle is just another word for, it's just a straight stitch. It doesn't have needle feed. It doesn't have a walking foot. It's just a simple single needle machine and I love it my other machine I used to have I'm sure if any of you follow me on chicken boots you've seen me post sewing videos and things and there would always be that co that comment that would be like why do you use such antique machines and I'd be like oh, you're insulting my machine <laughs> it's not old it's amazing just industrial and it's not pretty and white now they make them pretty and white but it was it was older I mean it was uh, not as old as me but getting there I don't like top stitching through the machine head uh, and I kind of wish I would have taken it out and started it again but I don't really want to do that at the, the center front waist either you know really where I should have done was start on the other side because that would have been under the um, it would have been under the um, waistband you know what I mean I'll show you in just a second so when you guys do yours because you're all making ginger jeans I'm talking to you or jeans of some sort do I have a corner and make sure Okay, I am getting to the zipper again. I don't need it right there. I just want to get right in that corner in the right spot. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I want to make sure my uh, waistband's nice and tidy. Kind of wish I would have looked at that a second ago, but we're just gonna trust Oh, okay. So I forgot about the zipper right there and um, I really lucked out. I only cut my thread. 
So that was a good warning. I was thinking about the waistband and we went right past the zipper and it, and it cut my thread. That brass is no joke. I'm going to back it up because I don't want to do a back stitch obviously right there on top of my zipper teeth. And then at least now I can look and see um, how this looked, which actually looked okay. This didn't get caught right here, so we can pull that down. I've been trying to avoid having my um, start and stop right here, and it's going to happen anyway. So now at least you can know what can happen. I'm, gonna, I'm pushing my waistband in here, like this, the seam allowance into the waistband. I'm going to pull out a little bit more of this so that it drops down and I can cover a little bit better. And this time I'm going to mark where my zipper teeth are right here as a reminder. So I would recommend doing that. <laughs> Do you want your jeans to have the rivets and all that, Gina? Is that why? I'll take out some of these pins. No, I'm not gonna take out those pins. I wanna take out those other pins. Here we go. Do that. I'm actually, I, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna do the rivets or not. I'm okay without them. It's funny, cause I used to work on a farm and um, when I think of rivets, I think about when I had car hearts. Oh, bye, Nicole. See you later. Um, I think about when I had car hearts and there's all these rivets on those. Um, and uh, when I would go like feed the turkeys or the chickens, <laughs> they would peck all the rivets. I still think about that. Okay, now I'm going a little carefully around my zipper teeth, finding the path of least resistance. see why I do that so um, if you're nervous about making sure that you get your waistband perfect there why is the thread broken right there you see that Ooh. it's a puzzle yeah you can um, I I can't I do I can't even remember like do you if you do the rivets afterward I'm pretty sure you do so you could live with them for a bit before you add all the hardware um and you know adding that hardware is really simple Gina it's just a hammer you know I, I like literally you could practice on a few before you do it so it does give a really nice look I totally like I would totally nerd out on that with you we can do that Okay, so uh, did you guys see, for some reason, my thread was broken back there, and I have a feeling it's because when I sewed over the pin, I've never, ever, ever had that happen. Um, but see there, I have a skip stitch. So much for not having all these uh, start and stops on my waistband. But we're just going to try and line it up with our um, stitches there. And we'll call it reinforcing. There you go. Okay. Not bad. Okay, I had nothing to fear. Thanks for holding my hand. <laughs> Except that, I don't like that. Oh, see? Okay, so this is my tip. When you go to do yours, start on this side here so you can have your start and stop under there. Because look how nice this one looks right here. Don't be surprised if I um, take this whole section out and start and stop and go around there. 
Or just talk me off the ledge. Tell me to back away. So uh, I'm not sure what button and buttonhole I'm going to do quite yet. Or button I'm going to do. Um, and I'll probably add a, uh, maybe a bar tack or something. But what do you guys think? It's pretty good. I can't wait to try these on. I made pants today. Maybe I'll, oh, my belt loops. Here we go. Bell loops. So I wanted to know how long to make them. It's on like the last page here. Yeah, so here they are. Five of them, three and a half inches long. Looking for my ruler. Here we go. Five of them, three and a half inches long. We're going to trust that that's what I'm going to get when I cut five. <laughs> I'm not going to end up with one that's one and a half. Woohoo, pants! <laughs> I know I want to see them on me too. Oh, they give you extra. There you go. Now you know. I'm like cutting this like scant three and a half inch thing. You have extra, just in case. So let's do our center back. And I think the way you do it is you go from here up to here like that. So let's see. See, the, what I would have liked is if these were in the waistband like this, in that seam and then um, then you bring it then you stitch across right here and then you bring it up to the thing that's how I how I used to do them there's lots of ways to do belt loops you're gonna start looking at your jeans watch and seeing how that they're sewn so I'm going to let's see I'm sure it tells me on the instructions what to do but I think what I'm gonna do and you need it that wide because belts are different widths. So I think I'm going to um, do this one here. And then I'm going to measure this one and do all the others the same. This is my center back. I'm going to do it first. And I should probably do it with a navy blue thread. No, I'm not going to do it with navy blue thread because I'm going to top stitch it. Okay. It's hard to see it start. Yeah, I got a, I got a stitch extra because it wasn't all nice and flat. Sorry, I got a little whiny there. <laughs> they do look amazing, and it's just a bunch of easy steps, right? Okay. And now I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to line it up with the stitching of my waistband that's already there. This is pretty thick, you guys, and so be careful. You can hear it in my machine. And uh, I kind of want to do this one here too, but I'm not sure. What do you think? Kind of gives it that professional look, huh? Let's read what they say. What do they recommend? What do the experts say? Oh, so they start from the top and go down. And then they do top stitch both. Okay, so. Yeah, I feel like it definitely needs a top stitch down here. Right. That's two. That's one. And then we're going to do our other one. Um, I'm going to say like right about here. I know it's on the pattern. I promise it's on the pattern. Um, oh, I have the pattern right here. 
Oh, that's what that is for. No, it's not this pattern piece. It's on the yoke. So I've got it on the front and then I have it on the yoke and I'm gonna look at the front and do those and then we'll figure out our backs. Yeah, they're not, you know, Gina, um, when um, I was watching Project One Way, Runway a really long time ago, I thought one of the designers said it really easily. They were like, sewing pants is easy. It's like sewing two sleeves together. And I was like, yeah, he's, he's kind of right, actually. Uh, it's right here, so about right here. Um, should we do it the way they say? Yeah, we'll do it the way they say. Okay. Do right here. Fitting pants is the, um, top stitch everything. Yeah, top stitch it all. <laughs> I know. All the top stitching. Oh, man, I used to really geek out on top stitching. Let me tell you. These don't look, I, I feel like my, my belt loops could look better. <laughs> I do think that. Oh, I kind of like going from the bottom up because this is pushing above the waistband. I don't really like the way that looks very much. It's very thick under there. And so then I'm going to uh, split the difference and maybe just do it visually, like right about there. I think right there. I'm so scientific, aren't I? Yeah, but you know, it's easier to like start from the top it's just, uh, not sure how I like the way it looks. I'm going to do the stitching, the first stitching just under my top stitching this time and see if I get rid of that bulge. Sometimes you never know. It's always the unexpected thing that fixes something. Definitely learned that multiple times. And so I've learned to try the opposite of what I think. And a lot of times that works. There we go. I think that did work actually. Rather than thinking, oh, I didn't put that on there precisely. I must get more precise. That wasn't going to fix it. Being more precise would have just did the exact same thing. But going just under this top stitching for my very first pass um, made it back off and, and reduced the stress at the top. I'm really trying to be stingy with my seam allowance on this but because I want my belt to go through, but at the same time, you uh, wanted to have a good bite of fabric there. Okay. Now I'm going to use these to mark the others. I'm going to go for my the, uh, side seam. Like that. And just mark it like that. That there we go. I love like every time I'm done with the stream when I finish something, the first thing I do is I go in the bathroom and I change all my mirrors. Our windows are like mirrored on the outside and no one can see. And I have been guilty of just doing it right here in the sewing room. <laughs> So don't ever drop in on me unexpected. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> uh, let's see like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just below that stitch line. Cause what, um, I think of this, like, did you, have you guys ever heard that term kerf for, um, woodworkers and how they, um, have to allow the width of the saw blade when they are measuring things. So when they cut something, you're losing the width of the saw blade and that's called the kerf. And I think of that when I think, when I find measurements like this, basically that's the kerf. Like we needed to allow this thickness of this uh, fold with the fabric 
should be able to fit in there better. I'm sure kerf is not the um, proper term for it in sewing, but it it's kind of like what I think of. It's just allowance. I'm glad I went with the yellow thread. I was a little nervous about it. They just feel more legit, you know? And I lucked out with the good yellow because some um, yellow threads are just not quite right. But you, uh, if you guys do shop yellow threads, I have seen ones that they cater to denim sewing. Um, probably because people need to repair their jeans and things. Um, so you can find it. There's different ones. And, and if you bring in your own pants, uh, you can um, try and match one. Because it is kind of hard. It's a different kind of yellow than you realize. I'm always trimming my threads so they look almost finished when I'm done. Okay, I'm going to trim this one. That was my beginning one. Hopefully I didn't make that one a little too short. It's so weird. I, I want like to put a label in these. Get up there. But I don't have one. All right, guys and gals. Now they look done. <laughs> yeah, well, it is an office, so people do come in. I had some guy the other day come in to tell me about some sort of some uh, hijinks that happened on the corner here over the weekend. I was like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Sorry. Okay. Get away, thread. Well, not bad. Okay, kids. That was an absolute pleasure to make with you. Thank you so much for coming. Now I'm just going to nitpick all my little, like, threads and make sure they're all gone. Let's look at the inside and see um, how they turned out. I think I can leave this pocket right here. It's not ideal, but you guys all learned that whacking it off got us into a little bit of trouble. Um, so just don't do it on your right pocket. You want to go a little further. I'm gonna write myself a note for that. Looks pretty good. Could be better, but my first pair, so I'm not complaining. My serger thread got snagged on that pin earlier, so that's what that is. a zipper fly on the inside. I always think it's really helpful to see how it looks on the inside so you know if you're on the right track when you're sewing things. People tend to hide some of that. My serger, uh, I pulled a little too much serger there, so I'll fix that too. All right, guys. Squee! <laughs> they do look amazing. I'm pretty pleased. I think I actually have enough fabric to make another pair. So I'm going to see how these fit, and maybe I want a different fitting pair, or maybe I want identical. I don't know. Maybe I want some more uh, overalls in it. So, thanks guys. Um, so this whole video will be uploaded. You can watch it again. I don't think you really want to stop through that again. Uh, you've already been here the whole time. But um, it's all there. So you can tell a friend if they're going to make these that um, they will learn from my mistakes. Because that's what we're all here for. Right? So, happy sewing. Have a great weekend. I think Thursday I'll be sewing an archer button up. Um, I'm not quite sure. I have three to sew right now and um, I really want that shirt. I need more shirts so I'm probably going to be doing that soon. So thanks for coming by guys. Have a great weekend and um, don't forget to use your turn signal. Don't text and drive. No I'm just teasing and I'm not really though. So uh, take care and um, We'll see you Thursday. Bye.